Chapter 3641 Twisted Story Boss Hugo Ran clenched his fists. This is impossible. Saya Chan is definitely being framed. Guo Ran's blazing killing intent caused that person to jump. He had felt Guo Ran to be weak and not a threat, which was precisely why he had targeted Guo Ran. He had even thought Guo Ran was some young master who had come out to enjoy the world. Guo Ran's killing intent erupted when he heard about the warrant for Xia Chen. He refused to believe that Xia Chen would do something like betraying his sect and master. Continue. Long Chen's expression was also gloomy. He understood Xia Chen's character. He wasn't such a person. There must be some secrets within this matter. Through that person's explanation, Long Chen learned that Xia Chen had only been a worker in the Spirit Rune Pavilion at the start. He had been waiting on the talisman apprentices. Later on, he had an opportunity. An instructor discovered his immense talent and accepted him as a disciple. In just half a year, he passed the trials and became a talisman master. Based on his age, he was one of the Spirit Rune Pavilion's ten youngest talisman masters in all of history. It could be said that Xia Chen had shaken the entire Spirit Rune Pavilion at that time. If it weren't for his unmistakably low spiritual strength, people would even suspect that he was a reincarnation of an old monster. After becoming a talisman master, he worked hard on mastering the various talisman arts. With his immense talent, he mastered the various kinds of talismans and runes. In just a year, he started the trial to be promoted to a talisman grandmaster. That news shook the entire heavenly talisman star field. It had to be known that a talisman master in their twenties was already an existence that deserved to have their own page in the heavenly talisman star field's history. Regretfully, at that time, Xia Chen failed the trial. While his soul energy's purity did reach the level of a talisman grandmaster, it wasn't strong enough. There were seven talismans that he had to make in the trial and after making six, he severely overdrafted his soul energy, causing him to fail on the seventh. Despite that, it caused quite a ruckus. That was because his first six talismans had all passed the mark. It had to be known that the trial for becoming a talisman grandmaster was extremely stringent. The difficulty to make those six talismans was unimaginable. But Xia Chen had passed all of them. His talent was something countless people admire, but also envied. To sum it up, at that time, Xia Chen's name became known throughout the heavenly talisman star field. This talent made him a monster. Search Novelum come for the original. Some people guessed that he would pass the trial within three years and become a talisman grandmaster. Even if he took three years to pass, he would still be history's youngest talisman grandmaster. What he was lacking was not talent or comprehension, nor was it experience. It was simply his soul energy. His soul energy would only grow stronger over time as his cultivation base increased. Although he hadn't passed that trial, he was already viewed as a talisman grandmaster. There was no suspense about him joining their ranks. The only question was how long would he need to pass the trial? One year? Two years? Or three years? As the spirit rune pavilion's brightest heavenly genius, he made all others appear dull and drab. None of them could compare to him. Xia Chen even ended up in a marriage agreement with the granddaughter of the spirit rune pavilion's master. The pavilion master, Gong Sun Xuan, supported the marriage. His granddaughter, Gong Sun Zi, was also very talented. The two of them were viewed as a perfect couple, the envy of countless people. For the spirit rune pavilion to end up with two peak heavenly geniuses like Xia Chen and Gong Sun Zi at the same time made countless people say that the spirit rune pavilion would return to its former glory at their hands. Furthermore, just over a month ago, a matter shook the entire heavenly talisman star field. 
the number of their heavenly talisman masters had gone from five to six the six was precisely the master of the spirit rune pavilion gong sun Xuan. a heavenly talisman master was an existence that made countless people prostrate themselves in worship the entire star field was shaken by it at the time the pavilion master had become a heavenly talisman master and he had two people with limitless potential to carry on his inheritance just like that the spirit rune pavilion's rise was definitely set in stone countless sects sent congratulatory gifts wanting to form a good relationship with them however the waves of gongsun chuen's promotion had yet to even settle before a bomb exploded Zaya Chen actually snuck into the spirit rune pavilion's sacred land opening the heavenly talisman gate and taking the priceless treasure of the spirit rune pavilion after being discovered he grabbed his fiancee as a hostage but due to how major the implications were even gong sun zi's capture didn't dissuade others when Zaya Chen was driven into a corner he actually used a spiritual art to control the root of gong sun zi's soul energy placing a talisman there it was an insidious talisman that would devour her spirit root resulting in her never being able to cultivate again in this lifetime everyone was shocked and enraged by Zaya chen's actions and due to this they opened a path for Zaya chen to leave using gong sun zi as a shield just as he was about to escape gong sun Xuan appeared saving gong sun zi but Zaya chen still fled just as he fled he was struck by gong sun Xuan's talisman the void was shattered at that time leaving a giant hole that had yet to heal even until now everyone saw Zaya chen transform into a streak of light and escape most likely he had managed to block gong sun Xuan's attack however that attack was gong sun Xuan's strongest heaven-shaking talisman let alone a little divine lord like Zaya Chen. Even a half step divine venerate would lose half their life if struck by such a talisman. Afterward, Zaya Chen vanished. Some people estimated that he was already dead. After all, that was a heaven shaking talisman, Gong Sun Xuan's strongest talisman and his strongest trump card. Countless experts had lost their lives to it thus people thought that Zaya chen was definitely dead however some people did not agree the heaven shaking talisman was a yang talisman at that time people had seen Zaya chen being covered in tens of thousands of black talismans in the heavenly talisman star field there were countless talismans however in general they could be classified as yin talismans yang talismans and yin yang talismans yang talismans were made with white paper yin talismans were made with black paper and yin yang talismans were made with colors other than black and white based on their character the heaven shaking divine talisman was a supreme yang talisman however Zaya Chen had some in tens of thousands of yin talismans and detonated them at the same time with the yin and yang forces pulling on each other he had most likely managed to block a portion of the attack while also unleashing a portion of its power into the void at most he had only endured a third of its power himself even though just a third of that talisman's power should be enough to kill any world king people refused to believe that Zaya chen didn't have other trump cards thus some people felt that he was very likely still alive. Zaya Chen had actually done such a disgraceful thing, trespassing on their holy land. That was practically as bad as killing his own master. Gong Sun Xuan was enraged and made a warrant for him. No matter where he was, he had to be found. If he was living, they wanted to capture him. If he was dead, they wanted to see his corpse. This matter didn't just shake the heavenly talisman star field, but it also caused outsiders to come. The reward that the spirit rune pavilion was offering was just that alluring. Thus, when Long Chen and Yuo Ran asked about Zai Chen, 
this person's first thought was that they also came for the reward. When this person was done with his story, Long Chen nodded. He directly tossed out ten thousand immortal king crystals and turned to leave. Just then, that person suddenly said, It seems that the two of you are Zaya Chen's friends. Then I'll add an additional piece of information. It is said that the Bloodkill Hall dispatched some terrifying experts because the Spirit Rune Pavilion requested their aid in hunting down Zaya Chen. Be careful. Bloodkill Hall. Terrifying experts? Long Chen narrowed his eyes. Chapter 3640 Two Foolish Sons of Rich Parents Boss What do we do? Should we go to the Spirit Rune Pavilion and capture that damn pavilion master? We'll give him a beating and have him hand over Zaya Chen, said Gua Ran. Can you please think before speaking? If the Spirit Rune Pavilion could find Zaya Chen, they wouldn't need to announce a warrant. That's what it means not to wash your dirty laundry in public. For them to do this, they clearly truly cannot find Zaya Chen and have to ask for aid from the entire Heavenly Talisman Star Field. What we need to do now is not seeking revenge. It's to find Zaya Chen. Furthermore, we must do it before the others find him. Most likely, he is seriously injured and is recuperating somewhere secret. He is in his most vulnerable state right now. We must find him first, said Long Chen gloomily. But how are we supposed to find him? Is it any different from searching for a needle in a haystack? said Gyu Ran worriedly. Long Chen once again irritably said, Please grow a brain. I really am bewildered by how you managed to become one of the four heavenly dragon heroes. On the martial heaven continent, didn't we have our own special way of staying in contact? Using dragon blood as the link, we created an instrument to find any of the dragon blood warriors who cultivated the dragon blood body tempering art. The compass will sense the dragon blood within a certain range. Zaya Chen definitely wouldn't be as foolish as you. He definitely preserved his dragon blood all this time. Perhaps he even has a sensing compass to sense the other dragon blood warriors. If two people activate the compass at once, it can sense even further. We'll definitely have an easier time finding him than anyone else. Oh, I really am a pig. I forgot about this. Boss is wise. I'll make one right now. Gyo Ram clapped his own head. In his worry, his head didn't work properly. This sensing compass had been developed by Gyo Ran and Zaya Chen back then. It was so that the dragon blood warriors could find each other if they were ever separated. However, they hadn't used it much in the mortal world. Who would have thought that they would find a use for it in the immortal world? When it came to the art of runes, Yuo Ran was not an expert. But this kind of compass was easy considering he had made it before. He quickly made two compasses. Boss, these are the best compasses I can make with the materials we have on hand. The sensing range should be beyond 300,000 miles. But the heavenly talisman star field is gigantic. It would take years to scan all of it. Where should we start? Asked Gua Ran. Long Chen shook his head. Being with this fellow caused his intelligence to fall. He couldn't even bother using his head now. Long Chen took out a map and pointed at a few markers. Let's start from these areas. These are the areas with the highest likelihood of finding Zaya Chen. Those markers were actually given to them by the fellow trying to peddle talismans to them. This was the calculations of the Spirit Rune Pavilion and the Heavenly Talisman Starfield experts. They had calculated the spatial fluctuations of that day, the remnant fluctuations of the heaven shaking talisman's explosion, as well as how Zaya Chen had transported himself. They then came up with several lines of space that Zaya Chen might have gone through. No way, those areas have been flipped through many times. How could Zaya Chen stay there? asked Gyo Ran. 
Find the original at Navaloon, come fool. Do you not understand that it's darkest right beneath the light? The more dangerous the place, the safer it is. Zaya Chen didn't have time to run anywhere far. If he tried, it would be even more dangerous. Rather than taking that risk, it would be better to stay in a chaotic land. The greater the chaos, the greater the holes. Furthermore, he is a talisman expert. He naturally knows how to conceal himself. The more muddied the waters, the better it conceals him. All right, let's not waste time. There are five regions. You take the ones on the left, I'll take the ones on the right, and we'll converge at the center. Rather than going fast, make sure that you cover all the space that he could be. Don't leave any gaps. Long Chen drew a path on the map just in case Guo Ran was careless and didn't go through the entire area. Guo Ran took the map. He also took out a flying boat and used a brush to write a line of words boldly on it. I, Guo Ran, come to find Saya Chen. Those who block my path to riches will be treated like the murderers of my parents. Anyone who dares to block me will be killed. Long Chen smiled. This fellow did have some smarts when he wanted to think. Outsiders would probably think that he was crazy and wouldn't want to bother him. But if Xia Chen saw it, he would definitely show himself. Xia Chen and Gua Ran had been together the longest. These ugly characters of Gua Ran's would be instantly recognized as the real deal. Not bad. Let's go. Long Chen and Gua Ran parted ways going to two separate areas. Long Chen also used a flying boat and wrote some characters on it, Dragon Blood Legion. He had thought about just writing his own name, but he felt that this was being too brash. Supposedly, even the Bloodkill Hall's assassins had come, although as long as it wasn't in Puda, he wasn't afraid at all. However, before finding Xia Chen, he didn't want to clash with anyone. Finding Xia Chen first was more important. When Long Chen arrived at the first area, he was dumbfounded. The number of flying boats in the sky made them seem like ravens. Those flying boats were emitting rays of divine light sweeping across the land. They made sure to go over every inch of this land. Damn! When Long Chen arrived, he just happened to see two flying boats attacking each other. He didn't know if they were fighting over an area to search or if something had happened, but in the end, the two flying boats smashed into each other, causing both flying boats to explode. Two wretched figures then came flying out of the wreckage. Both of them were in bad tempers. With a wave of their hands, one talisman after another came flying out. They were like flying blades spinning through the air. Those blades would then explode, occasionally causing a tempest, soaring flames, frost that covered everything, or golden light to erupt. This was Long Chen's first time seeing two talisman cultivators fighting. First, ignoring their actual fighting skill, it had to be said that a battle between talisman cultivators was very eye-catching. All of their moves were flashy and pretty. However, after watching for just a bit, Long Chen got bored. It seemed that neither of them was a true expert. They were just randomly tossing out talismans, competing over who had more. Furthermore, as their hands got to work, their mouths didn't slack off. They were constantly cursing each other. It seemed that they were intent on competing until one of their stocks was exhausted. Whoever ran first would be the loser. It seemed that they weren't competing in terms of power. Those talismans were all money. It was clearly a method of using money to crush the other side. These were two foolish sons of rich parents that were burning money to play around. Navaloon, calm some other talisman cultivators watched them like watching monkeys perform. They occasionally even cheered for them. As a result, the two of them fought more energetically. Talismans were flung out as if they cost nothing at all. Long Chen shook his head. These two were clearly idiots, and he couldn't be bothered to keep watching. 
he continued onward. Just as he started on the path that he had decided, his compass began to violently shake. Chapter 3643 Brothers Reunite Found Him Long Chen's heart pounded wildly. The compass quickly pointed in one direction. However, after locking in that direction, the compass suddenly dimmed and became still. Long Chen quickly rushed off with his flying boat. All of a sudden, he saw countless figures rushing off in the same direction he was heading to. A sea of people was tightly surrounding one area. There was a giant spatial crack here. Right now, the spatial crack was slowly healing. But the earth was torn apart and a terrifying energy still hung in the air. It seemed that a large battle had just been fought here, as expected of the Bloodkill Hall's number one genius. He found Zaya Chen so quickly. It's too bad Zaya Chen still managed to get away. However, he coughed up blood just now from the injury. He probably didn't get far. He'll be found again quickly, and then all that awaits him is death. That Jai Wying really is terrifying. We searched for so long without finding a single trace, but he found Zaya Chen as soon as he arrived. After all, that's an assassin. Their noses are sharper than dogs. It's nothing to be surprised about. When Long Chen arrived, he heard countless people talking about it. Hence, his expression sank and he directly squeezed his way through. Seeing this, some people were irritated by his brashness. They were about to start a fight, but when they saw Long Chen's gaze, they were so terrified that their curses were swallowed back into their stomachs. Passers-by, get out of here! Don't interfere with our Bloodkill Hall's matters. We are gathering specimens. When Long Chen reached the edge of the battlefield, there were several masked, cloaked people blocking him and anyone else from going any further. However, Long Chen ignored their warning and directly walked in. One of them glared at him and was about to attack when he saw Long Chen's face more clearly. At that moment, an expression of terror came across his face. You, that expert didn't even get to move before Long Chen slapped him in the face. His entire head exploded. Everyone was shocked. Those Bloodkill Hall experts were in the midst of gathering the bloodstains and investigating it for something, so they didn't expect someone to suddenly barge in and start killing. Long Chen didn't give them any chance to react at all. They were killed with one slap after another. In just a moment, the four Bloodkill Hall experts were all slain. The final one was in the midst of fading into the void when Long Chen dragged him out and killed him with a slap as well. Seeing this scene, everyone was terrified. As Jai Wying's trusted aides, those assassins were experts amongst experts, but Long Chen slaughtered them effortlessly. If they didn't personally see it, they wouldn't believe it. In their eyes, Long Chen had slaughtered these experts without any effort at all. But in truth, every single one of his attacks contained immense profundities that they simply could not comprehend even after seeing it. Long Chen was far too familiar with the Bloodkill Hall's movement art. He had predicted their movements the moment he appeared, so, while it appeared as if those Bloodkill Hall experts were simply waiting to be hit, it was not the case. It simply appeared bizarre to the people. After killing those four, Long Chen ignored the others. He then touched the fresh blood on the ground. He was previously injured. Now, this is injury on top of injury. Sensing the fluctuations coming from the blood, Long Chen circulated the dragon blood by tempering art. He quickly sensed the general direction of Zaya Chen. Zaya Chen had transported himself away, but due to his injury, the dragon blood aura remained in the air. From it, Long Chen was able to see some clues. Jai Wine was already chasing after Zaya Chen, but his efficiency should be much lower than Long Chen's. That was why his subordinates were gathering samples here. It was in case he failed to follow the tracks. Long Chen then put away the flying boat. 
it was too slow no longer caring about exposing his status he rushed off like a bolt of lightning who was that how is he so terrifying it was only once long chen left that people started reacting heavens isn't he that madman who's been plundering the soaring dragon company in the chaotic star sea he slaughtered countless heavenly geniuses i heard he even defeated yan zu's son he is the youngest dean in the history of the number one academy of the nine heavens and ten lands long chen some people recognized long chen's adornment but they weren't too sure in the chaotic star sea long chen had killed an unknown number of heavenly geniuses from various races along with yan zu's son hence his name had long since spread throughout the large domains however the violet flame heaven was gigantic so information couldn't spread that rapidly after all the experts of the various regions were more familiar with their homes and the laws of the heavenly dows there they had no need to run around with the human race as for the human race they weren't too friendly with each other anyway the main reason long chen's name could reach this place was because of the soaring dragon company in all the history of the soaring dragon company he was definitely the first to dare to so openly plunder their treasuries of course after people recognized him some of them immediately alerted the soaring dragon company in hopes of obtaining a reward at this moment long chen had found xia chen's tracks so he no longer cared if others recognized him his goal was to find xia chen as quickly as possible as space quivered long chen appeared atop a large mountain it had just crumbled and there was dust everywhere xia chen had just been transported here as for jai wang he had chased xia chen down here but based on the scars xia chen hadn't stayed behind he had undergone a second transportation long chen continued following the aura this jai wang was truly terrifying even without a compass even without being able to sense dragon blood he was relying on some unknown ability to track xia chen long chen chased him down as quickly as he could while also actively throwing out the compass's fluctuations in hopes of xia chen sensing it finally on the fourth transportation long chen's compass reacted long chen was delighted xia chen had finally sensed his compass at this moment long chen stopped moving standing atop the peak of a mountain he calmly waited if xia chen had noticed him then there was no need for him to continue chasing xia chen would naturally transport to him if they both started running to each other they would just end up switching locations and their senses would be thrown into disarray they might not even be able to find each other long chen's compass grew brighter and brighter xia chen was getting closer and closer Boot. search navaloon come for the original suddenly the void quivered and a blood-soaked figure came out it was xia chen when xia chen saw long chen his eyes immediately reddened. Buzz! Xia Chen was choked with sobs. He was thin and haggard, and there was an unmistakable weariness and pain in his eyes that aggrieved Long Chen. Bud brother, everything is in the past. Long Chen emotionally hugged Xia Chen. He then took out a healing pill for him. But Xia Chen had just consumed it when the void once more exploded. At this moment, a sword pierced toward Xia Chen. Xia Chen, you won't get away. That voice was icy, like a specter from hell. Likewise, I don't know if you'll be able to get away. Killing intent exploded out of Long Chen. The Minghong saber came flying out of its sheath, and a powerful mental energy instantly lopped onto that person. Chapter 3644 Supreme Heavenly Genius Jai Wang Long Chen's saber contained his full heart and spirit, and it completely locked onto that person, not letting him get away. Boom. Two divine weapons clashed together, resulting in an explosion of sparks. When that happened, 
the world was like a mirror that was struck. Cracks instantly spread throughout the void. Spatial energy. Long Chen was startled. At this moment, his saber's power was released into the void by a strange energy. Due to how long he had known Bai Zio, he was familiar with spatial energy. Seeing this, he instantly had a bad feeling. Without hesitation, Long Chen slashed his saber behind him. Boom! Another explosion caused cracks to appear in the void. Long Chen repeatedly slashed his saber sixteen times. Other than the first one when he took the initiative to attack, the rest were all him being forced to passively defend. The attacker was as quick as lightning, and his movements were like that of a phantom. Long Chen couldn't even grasp them. Furthermore, the attacker's target was always Xia Chen who was behind him. That enraged Long Chen. This person actually dared to ignore him and focus on killing Xia Chen when he was right there. It can be hard to make great work when it's stolen from Navaloon. Come Long Chen, is it? You're quite famous, but is this all your power? If I Jai Wying wished to kill someone, then not even ten of you would be enough to stop me. That person sneered, and his sword continued to dance in the air, aiming for Xia Chen. Even Imputa doesn't dare to say such big words in front of me. Who do you think you are? Do you think having a supreme bone is so amazing? Long Chen snorted. After his battle with Old Devil Tianai, he was more familiar with supreme bones. Thus, he could sense the aura of a supreme bone on Jai Wying's body. Furthermore, this person was capable of activating spatial energy without hand seals, incantations, or even using his spiritual strength. It was directly unleashed. That meant that his spatial energy was not something he latently cultivated, but a kind of innate divine ability. It was somewhat similar to Bai Zio's three flower pupils. However, even when it came to the three flower pupils, the body, mouth, and will still had to work together to use spatial power. On the other hand, this person's spatial power was unleashed all on its own. That made Long Chen guess that it was the natural spatial energy of this person's supreme bone. Split the heavens one. Violet Kai burst out of the Minghong saber, and it slashed through the air. Its sharp killing intent locked onto Jai Wang once again. Ooh. Cracks once more appeared in the void. However, it was different from before. Previously, Long Chen's energy was all blocked by spatial energy. But this time, a violet saber image continued through the spatial cracks to strike Jai Wang. Jai Wang was forced back three steps. On the third step, the ground beneath his feet exploded, and it was caused by a golden talisman that had appeared there. The golden talisman's explosion made Jai Wang grunt in pain. His lower legs were turned into pulp. That talisman was placed by Xia Chen. Even Long Chen didn't know how he had sent the talisman there. The timing and location were so perfect that even Jai Wang was struck by it. All of a sudden, the void exploded, and a black armored figure came flying out. His black saber slashed down on Jai Wang with all his power. Gua Ran had arrived. After receiving a message from Long Chen, Gua Ran immediately rushed over. Long Chen chased Xia Chen, while Gua Ran chased Long Chen, resulting in him arriving now. Without hesitation, he unleashed his strongest attack. Split the heavens, too. Jai Wang had just been knocked back by Long Chen and injured by Xia Chen. And now that Guo Ran's attack came, he didn't even have time to think and could only block hastily. As a result, Guo Ran's blow sent him flying. Without a chance to unleash his spatial energy, he was blown far into the distance. After that, Xia Chen took out dozens of talismans. With a wave of his hand, those talismans covered heaven and earth. HMPH interesting. To be able to injure me, although you used numbers, I have to say that you have some ability. 
but if you want to trap me, you must be dreaming. Next time, I will take your life. Jai Wying's figure suddenly vanished into the void. It was then that Zaya Chen's talismans unleashed a barrier of light. He had been trying to keep Jai Wying trapped here, but he was one step too late. Fuck, he got away. That's too bad, but he he who cares. We'll kill him next time. Brother Zaya Chen, I really missed you. Without you, I feel like the entire world is black and white. I can't see a trace of color. Guo Ran was a bit displeased that Jai Wying escaped, but seeing Zaya Chen again made him forget about that. Guo Ran immediately walked over and gave Zaya Chen a fierce hug. Yes, these days without you really have been hard. Us brothers can't be parted. Now we can collaborate once more. Zaya Chen embraced Guo Ran tightly. The two of them began weeping without being aware of it. Yua Ran and Zaya Chen were perfect partners. After so many years of collaboration, they could practically communicate without words. A simple gaze was enough to convey what they were thinking to each other. Hence, the two of them only needed a glance to know that both of them had suffered during this time. They couldn't even say anything and simply wept. It was only after a while that the two of them calmed down. Zaya Chen then activated a transportation talisman, sending the three of them into a secluded mountain range. This place was also not safe. According to Zaya Chen, his enemies would manage to track them down in at most six hours. Long Chen felt that six hours was enough. He then checked Zaya Chen's body and found that his outer wounds were nothing. The main concern was the injury to his soul. In order to block Gong Sun Xuan's attack back then, he had paid a terrifying price. Because of it, he had yet to recover. After giving Xia Chen several medicinal pills, Long Chen used his own spiritual strength to help him recover. Although Long Chen wasn't a talisman cultivator and didn't purely raise his soul energy, his spiritual strength was incomparably powerful. With the aid of his spiritual strength, Zaya Chen's soul energy would quickly recover as well. In just four hours, Zaya Chen's soul energy recovered to around 80%, and his outer injury was also healed. Only then did Long Chen ask Zaya Chen about the situation. When this matter was raised, Zaya Chen was first silent for a moment before flames of fury filled his eyes. I, Zaya Chen, have never hated someone so much in this lifetime. Boss, I will definitely kill Gongs and Xuan and that bitch. Chapter 3645 Despicable Grandfather and Granddaughter When Zai Chen ascended from the martial heaven continent, he arrived in the heavenly talisman star field. He then directly aimed for the spirit rune pavilion due to its reputation. Just like Yuo Ran, he was rejected. He didn't have enough power, nor did he have the money to pay to take the test. That was ignoring all the money he needed for his future cultivation. Moreover, Zaya Chen wasn't as fortunate as Kyuo Ran. No one came to help him. In order to stay in the Spirit Rune Pavilion, Zaya Chen had to register as a regular worker first. He started off just playing second fiddle to those talisman apprentices secretly studying as he worked. The talismans and runes that he started off with were made with pieces of trash material that he gathered over time. They were essentially scrap. In that environment, Zaya Chen steadily learned things bit by bit, accumulating power. Finally, as a worker, he had the chance to butt in a trial for disciples, managing to draw the attention of an instructor. Zaya Chen chose to interrupt during a certain question that had befuddled that instructor for a long time. After that, Zaya Chen's words ended up enlightening the instructor, instantly causing him to favor Zaya Chen. That instructor was someone that Zaya Chen had had an eye on for a long time. His character wasn't bad. That was why Zaya Chen had taken this chance to show off when the chance came. That instructor then showed favor to Zaya Chen 
paying for him and using his own connections to set up a test for Zia Chen to become a talisman apprentice. As a result, Zia Chen passed with full marks, astonishing everyone. After that, Zia Chen was like a soaring phoenix. As he constantly learned more, his terrifying talent was gradually displayed. The entire spirit rune pavilion began to take note of him. When he passed the trial to become a talisman master, his fame was even more resounding. As for the trial for talisman grandmaster, although he failed, he still shook the entire heavenly talisman star field. The heavenly talisman star field might not see such a genius talisman cultivator in tens of thousands of years. At that time, Zia Chen became the most brilliant star, and countless talisman cultivators worshipped him. Wherever he went, he was followed by fawning people, and there were countless beauties around him. He was always the brightest star in any event. What moved Zia Chen the most was that he not only gained the favor of the pavilion master, Gongsun Chuan, but he also gained the favor of the spirit rune pavilion's number one beauty. Gongsun Zi was famous for being an ice beauty and not being moved by any man. Only Zia Chen could win her favor, and they even had a marriage agreement. At that moment, Zia Chen would say that he had reached the pinnacle of his life. He had a beauty to accompany him all day, and the spirit rune pavilion's tomes were all available for him to peruse. They didn't hold anything back. Zia Chen then grew more and more familiar with talismans and runes. His perseverance was almost maniacal. It seemed that he had grown to love this work more than his own life. After that, practically the entire heavenly talisman Starfield's tones were at his disposal. He studied all kinds of runes, and the pavilion's elders even discussed the evolution of various runes with him. He then ended up inferring runes of the ancient era and writing plenty of his thoughts on the subject. It could be said that he had made huge contributions to the spirit rune pavilion. Brother, you were so skilled that you could interpret the ancient era's talismans, causing the spirit rune pavilion to soar once more. You have limitless potential. Is the Gosan family crazy? Why would they try to destroy you? Gyu Ran couldn't help asking. Zia Chen bitterly smiled. That was my first thought, too. I was completely loyal to the spirit rune pavilion. Countless headhunters secretly tried to buy me, but I rejected them all. It wasn't because the pavilion master had so much trust in me or because Gongsun Zi treated me so well. I simply felt that after learning all my skills from the spirit rune pavilion, this place was my home and I couldn't do anything that would be a betrayal of my home. But I didn't expect that while my heart was clear and bright, they were actually using me. At first, they only eyed my talent with runes, but then their target turned to my soul energy seed in my body. At that time, I fell for a trap that they set up. Gong San Zi tried to take my soul energy seed, while Gong San Chuan wanted to take over my body. That grandfather and granddaughter are animals. A vein throbbed on Zia Chen's forehead when he explained this. Tilly intent filled his eyes. He had always shown loyalty to the Spirit Rune Pavilion, but why would the Spirit Rune Pavilion bear malice toward him? He had never expected that this one matter would completely change their thinking. There was a restricted area in the Spirit Rune Pavilion called the Spirit Rune Sacred Land. It was actually a palace where the spirit rune pavilion's most ancient inheritance was locked. It was said to contain the true foundation of the spirit rune pavilion. Inside was a record of the most profound talismans of ancient times. However, since no one could crack the runes on the gate, the inheritance had remained locked inside for tens of thousands of years. No one knew what was really there. It went without saying that Saya Chen was a genius. In just over a month, through repeated calculations and deductions, he finally opened this gate that had been locked for countless years. What he hadn't expected was that by opening this gate, he also opened the path to his own demise. Just as he was cheering over his success, 
a poisonous dagger stabbed him through the back. He would never forget Gong Sun Zi's cold sneer when he turned back. That smile was full of disdain and the pity of someone who thought of themselves as far, far above him. Meanwhile, Gongs and Chuen just watched from the side. He was like a wily old fox with everything in his control. What was in his eyes was not pity, it was greed. Perhaps it was due to her pity, but Gongs and Zi told Zia Chen the reason for this. Even Xia Chen was unaware that his soul energy was actually so pure that it had mutated. With the right conditions, it was possible to produce a mutated spirit root, and it could be considered a talisman element spirit root. A mutated spirit root was just as precious as a supreme bone. Also, Xia Chen's cultivation base was at the late Divine Lord realm, the optimal time to take a mutated spirit root. If Xia Chen advanced and became an immortal king, the spirit root would awaken and remember his body. At that time, taking it would be very difficult. Even if they did, it would be difficult to get it to form a connection with someone else. It had taken a great deal of consideration for them to do this to Xia Chen. His talent was so great that he had helped the spirit rune pavilion progress rapidly but a mutated spirit root was even more attractive than his talent. Gong Sun Xuan was also eyeing Xia Chen's body. Xia Chen's talent with runes was astonishing, so his body would have memories of that talent. For that purpose, Gong Sun Xuan was planning on taking over his body. Since that was the case, the two of them chose to make their move just as Xia Chen opened the gate to this sacred land. With the gate open, they felt that Xia Chen wasn't too useful any longer, and so they went to take everything that he had. Theft is never good, try looking at Navaloon calm. However, they hadn't expected Xia Chen, who was exhausted at that time, to have studied an ancient death substitution talisman. He had stuck one to himself as soon as he learned how to make them. He hadn't even had an opportunity to tell them about his success in this research before they attacked him. Luckily, it wasn't time for Xia Chen to die yet. Just as they were about to kill him, he activated the death substitution talisman and escaped. Fuck how hateful! Repaying kindness with enmity. They are worse than animals. Huo Ran clenched his teeth furiously wanting to directly charge over and kill the two of them right now. Chapter 3646, attaching the bone Guo Ran, was even angrier than Xia Chen, although he had also been bullet in the Heavenly Dragon Divine Armor College. That was simply because the cultivation world was like that. There were too many wolves and not enough meat to go around. With a limited amount of resources, if you wanted them, you had to fight for them. However, the pavilion master Gong Sun Xuan had schemed against Xia Chen with his granddaughter, harming someone who had shown favor to the spirit rune pavilion. It was absolutely vile. The most unacceptable thing was that they actually used love to trick Xia Chen. The pain from such a betrayal was unbearable. Let's go. We're almost out of time, and we need to switch locations. I don't know what that wily old fox did to me, but he keeps being able to find my general location, said Xia Chen. All these days of running had made Xia Chen realize that the other side was able to slowly determine his location. He didn't know if it was due to him cultivating the spirit rune pavilion's secret arts or something else. We're not leaving. We'll kill anyone who comes, said Guo Ran hatefully. Killing them is meaningless. They are just cannon fodder that the spirit ruined pavilion is using to disturb me. There's no need to waste time on them, said Xia Chen. Long Chen nodded. Xia Chen is correct. There is no need to waste time on them. Jai Wying ended up running. But next time, he will definitely strike like lightning. I'm not afraid of him, but I am worried about you too. He possesses a supreme bone and is a natural controller of spatial energy. Adding on his status as an assassin, Mi cannot be careless. 
Ziachen has yet to recover, while Gyo Ran, don't you also have something important you need to study with Zia Chen? That's right. Gyo Ran slacked his leg and jumped up excitedly. The three of them went through several more transportations. In a new location, Gyo Ran proudly took out a black arm bone and showed it to Zia Chen. When Zia Chen saw the runes on the black bone, he almost jumped. These are runes born of heaven and earth how can they appear on a person's body he he this is a supreme bone supreme heavenly geniuses are all bestowed with gifts from heaven and earth they naturally aren't ordinary however this gift was taken by me Zia chen you're skilled with runes can you see how to link this thing with my body i've already nourished it for a while and my mental mark has appeared on it. You have a way, right? Guo Ran looked at Zia Chen excitedly. The current Guo Ran was like a child who couldn't wait any longer. It was like he was afraid of Zia Chen saying that he didn't have a solution. Moreover, his tense expression looked like he was waiting for a sentencing. Whether he would be executed or alive was up to Zia Chen's next words. Zia Chen lightly touched the black bone. He still had a shocked expression, which gradually grew grave. Never had he ever come into contact with this kind of rune. He then spent an hour just examining it, with sweat dripping down his forehead. Gua Ran was also sweating. Zia Chen stared at the black bone, while Gua Ran stared at him. Neither of them blinked. Beautiful. A masterpiece of the heavenly Taoes. It is truly amazing. Zaya Chen finally sighed in amazement. What? Don't get so shocked. Can I use the bone or not? Asked Guo Ran urgently. Yes, you can. But you will probably have to pay quite the price. The first thing to do is to cut off your own arm and then plant the runes of the black bone on your skeleton. That way, the bone will form an attachment to you. However, this attachment can't be completed in just one step. There are many processes that you must go through, and every process will be very painful. The pain will definitely not be inferior to when Boss trained us in the dragon blood body tempering art. You have to be mentally prepared. Furthermore, the source of this black bone's power lies in the bloodline. You have Bossy's dragon blood energy, so you can use it but due to its own original source being different. It will need to gradually get accustomed to the dragon blood energy. The start of that process will also be painful, and that pain will only stop when both powers fully merge. You have to think this through. Once you start, you can't go back, warned Zaya Chen gravely. What are you talking about? When have I, Q Aran, ever been afraid of pain? If you want to show off, you have to pay a price. Even Boss said that if you want to stand above others, you have to sacrifice more than them. However much I pay now is how much higher I'll stand above others. Aha, when I wear my battle armor in the future, I'll have the supreme bone inside, and I'll be able to look down on everyone. Come, brother, go ahead and start. Don't talk about those meaningless things. If you say too much, I'll lose my confidence. Gua Ran clenched his teeth and stuck out his right arm. It's not time yet. I'll need to replicate the bone's runes and plant them in your body first. That will increase the familiarity between you two. Otherwise, this bone will simply destroy your skeleton, said Zaya Chen. After saying that, Zaya Chen got to work, taking out a refined desk and inscribing brush as well as hundreds of different powders of different colors, he got to work. The first thing he did was mix the powders into liquid. The curious thing was that when these different colored powders were mixed, they turned black. Moreover, the liquid came to possess the same aura as the bone. Seeing this, Long Chen was amazed. This was also a grand Tao, just like the pill Tao. When raised to the pinnacle, there was no differentiating which was greater. 
Xia Chen first copied the runes on the bone, and his copies were perfect duplicates. Only then did he start drawing on talisman paper. A single talisman had to go through hundreds of copies and then hundreds of tests. Also, repeatedly detonating them to test their power was the only way to confirm if they could be used or not. When Xiaochen detonated a talisman the size of a fingernail, it left a giant ripple in the air. That power was equivalent to a full power attack from a late-stage world king. Seeing this scene, Guo Ran jumped in terror. Just this single rune was already so terrifying. If it was stuck onto his bones, would he still have his life? But having said some big words, he couldn't take them back. Guo ran directly, stopped watching, and ran off, saying that he was going to guard them, when in reality he was afraid that if he kept watching, he wouldn't have the courage to take in the black bone. Time passed bit by bit. The three of them constantly moved around, and three days quickly passed. During these three days, Xia Chen had drawn over 3,600 talismans before he finally finished. Search Navaloon, come for the original. Guo Ran, come over, called Xia Chen. Guo Ran was pale, but after taking a deep breath, he stuck out his right arm. Without a word, Xia Chen cut off his arm, and Guo Ran clenched his teeth in pain. Xia Chen then waved his other hand. Three thousand and six hundred fingernail-sized talismans spread out to cover Guo Ran's body. Ah! Uh, Guo Ran let out a scream. Those talismans were like worms burrowing into his flesh and attaching to his bones. Boss, start, said Xia Chen, holding the bone. Long Chen nodded and pressed a hand on Guo Ran's back. At that time, Xia Chen placed the bone on Guo Ran's shoulder. Boom! When the arm bone met Guo Ran's bone, a powerful explosion rang out along with the sound of bones shattering. Guo Ran instantly fainted. Chapter 3647 Soaring Killing Intent H.H. Guo Ran had just fainted when he instantly woke up from the pain. He felt like every bone in his body was shattering and repairing. His soul was also in immense pain, as if it was being torn apart. I can't, I can't do this. Guo Ran screamed, his eyes almost popping out from the pain. There's no turning back now. Xia Chen shook his head. Ignoring Guo Ran's screams, he continued controlling the talismans, having the runes within Guo Ran's body form a connection with the runes on the arm. I'm going to die, I'm really going to die, screamed Guo Ran. His eyes were open, but he couldn't see anything. No matter how he screamed, Long Chen and Xia Chen ignored him. With Guo Ran's current physical body, there was no way he would die. What kind of joke was that? Long Chen had split a portion of his true dragon essence blood with him. His physical body had reached a terrifying level. Right now, Guo Ran was in the midst of switching out his skeleton. Although the power of his blood and flesh was strong, his skeleton was weaker. The injection of the dragon blood didn't strengthen his bones enough. Hence, if Guo Ran wanted this arm, he had to make his skeleton reach a level that could control it. Right now, Xia Chen was helping Duo Ran absorb the Supreme Bone's power so that he could strengthen his whole skeleton. Just a single arm was useless. If he were to fight someone in that condition, in the first exchange his Supreme Bone would fly off and every other bone in his body would explode. Duo Ran's bones were constantly shattering and being reborn. Long Chen's life energy was helping him recover. Guo Ran couldn't die, but he would wish he was dead. Who told him to choose this path? Since he had already chosen it, there was no going back. Guo Ran was constantly screaming like a pig being slaughtered. It was unknown how many times he had fainted from the pain just to wake up from the pain again. In the end, he fully fainted and fell silent. As for Long Chen and Xia Chen, they were covered in sweat. The supreme bone was finally connected to Guo Ran's skeleton. 
His bones had broken and recovered hundreds of thousands of times before finally being able to match this supreme bone. This supreme bone was actually rather long and not quite the same shape as the human race's arm. But after merging, it grew to the same size and shape as Guo Ran's original arm. Also, flesh started to grow on the bone. On the surface, it looked like a normal arm. However, there were countless runes flowing within this arm. It was currently adapting to its new body, constantly changing its new home. Because of it, Guo Ran's physical body was steadily growing stronger. Boss, this supreme bone has a heavy evil air. I'm worried that in the future, said Xia Chen. It's fine. Every person has a dark side. Although Guo Ran likes to show off, his inner heart is kind. He won't be affected by this little bit of darkness. After all, this supreme bone was never fully awoken. It has a great deal of plasticity, and it won't affect Guo Ran's inner heart. Otherwise, I wouldn't have let him keep it back then, said Long Chen. Hearing that, Xia Chen relaxed about this matter. When looking at the slumbering Guo Ran, he enviously said, This fellow is so lazy. But now that he has a supreme bone, not even the heavens can contain him. With this supreme bone, Guo Ran would definitely be strutting around all day. A supreme bone was an unrivaled existence, and with the addition of his battle armor, there was simply no way to estimate Guo Ran's combat power. Furthermore, a supreme bone's true power would only truly manifest in the immortal king realm. Once this fellow became an immortal king, he would definitely soar. Seven days later, Guo Ran finally woke up, and when he saw his arm, he immediately grabbed it and felt it. Sensing the endless power within it, he almost didn't believe it himself. After that, he let out a simple punch in the air. A heaven-shaking explosion caused a mountain far off in the distance to crumble, and the ear-piercing sound didn't fade for a long time. Boss, Xia Chen, punch me. Am I dreaming? shouted Guo Ran. Long Chen immediately kicked him. This kick was actually filled with such power that Xia Chen jumped in shock. Guo Ran then cried out as he was sent flying. He tumbled back like a shooting star, crashing through multiple mountains. He then vanished beyond the horizon, leaving only a line of dust. It was unknown just how far he was going. Boss, that was a bit vicious. Xia Chen was gobsmacked. That kick was vicious. Was Long Chen not afraid of Guo Ran dying? It had to be known that Guo Ran didn't have any defenses up at all. Just then, Guo Ran came flying back in his devil dragon battle armor. Ah! Oh. Guo Ran took off his armor and laughed. That powerful kick didn't cause any damage at all, even though he hadn't been on guard. The Supreme Bone had automatically helped him block the majority of the impact. Other than that, even while smashing through those mountains, he wasn't injured at all. I, Guo Ran, am unrivaled. Oh, Guo Ran raised his right arm. Right now, even he didn't know just how much stronger he was. Thus, he had the urge to find a peak expert to fight with right now. Your arm is still getting used to you, so there's a great deal of room for improvement. You should communicate with it more and learn how to control its power. Also, there are many runes on the arm that I couldn't understand. You'll need to study them yourself. Ah, your luck really is enviable, said Xia Chen with a smile. Although Xia Chen said that he was envious, he had a gratified smile. If Guo Ran got stronger, that made Xia Chen even happier than if he himself got stronger. Hee hee, don't worry, I'll definitely study this. Just who am I? I am Guo Ran, the general of the Dragon Blood Legion, a possessor of a supreme bone. Starting today, I will turn a new leaf, declared Guo Ran proudly. He was almost incoherent. I wonder who was screaming for their parents. 
just now saying that he would die and wanted to give up Zia Chen curled his lips brother are you my brother if you're my brother then you should cheer me on not drag me down said Yua Ran just thinking about his appearance before this made him feel embarrassed all right don't mess around you ran you've just merged with the supreme bone but since our time is rather limited i'll give you three days to get used to your new arm and power said long chen during the next three days long chen personally trained you ran having him get used to his new power as for Zia chen he took this opportunity to restore his power to its peak support a set nav alone come three days were quickly over now saya chen was at full power and a sharp light was contained within his eyes he had regained his old confidence as for guo ran his confidence was completely inflated with long chen's training he had reached an initial level of control over his supreme bone even without his battle armor he was able to fight long chen evenly it could be said that Yuo Ran's combat power had instantly soared dozens of times. If it wasn't a fight to the death, even Long Chen wouldn't dare to say that he could defeat the current Yuo Ran. The power of a supreme bone was truly monstrous. Once their preparations were complete, the three of them returned to their original location, their killing intent soaring. Their goal was to wipe away all their grudges. Chapter 3648 Sending Coffins The Heavenly Talisman Starfield's Hidden Dragon Prefecture was a sea domain, and millions of islands were scattered about like stars in the sky there. The water was calm, with dense immortal kai and mist that covered the sea in a mysterious haze. The smaller islands were around a hundred miles long, while the bigger ones were millions and millions of miles wide they were almost the same size as the heavenly swell domain a quick look at navaloon calm will leave you more fulfilled this sea domain was called the hidden dragon prefecture the legend was that in the desolate era it was a dragon pool in other words a place where dragons roamed there was once a dragon nest beneath the islands and in the desolate era the dragon race occupied this territory later on the dragon race disappeared and the human race became the master of this region the human race and the dragon race were comparatively closer compared to the devil race so the human race easily adapted to this place in the hidden dragon prefecture they would carry out a major ceremony every year offering sacrifices to the dragon race's heroic spirits for their blessing it was said that Hidden Dragon Prefecture was protected by the dragon race's ancestral soul. As long as this ceremony didn't cease, the ancestral soul would not fade away. It could continue to protect the human race generation after generation. No one had seen the dragon soul before, but one thing was a fact. Hidden Dragon Prefecture had never been attacked by any devil beasts or sea demons. It was unknown if it was due to the dragon soul or because this was the ancestral land of the dragon race, causing some lingering dragon might to drive them away. In any case, this was a comparatively peaceful land. It was precisely due to this that Hidden Dragon Prefecture's biggest island was even larger than an average domain. Countless cultivators gathered here. Hidden Dragon Prefecture had one island in particular that was called Hidden Dragon Island. In terms of surface area, it could only rank number three, but it was the island with the most flourishing populace. This was where the spiritual Kai of the Heavenly Talisman Star Field was densest. The island was covered in cities and sects and had too many cultivators to count. The Spirit Rune Pavilion was located in the northwest region of Hidden Dragon Island. At this moment, countless people were coming and going through the gates of the Spirit Rune Pavilion. It was a day of celebration. Today was the formal award ceremony for Gong Sun Xuan becoming a Heavenly Talisman Master. This was a major affair for the entire Heavenly Talisman star field. 
according to the rules a month after announcing it to the world a good day would be chosen to carry out the award ceremony that was because a heavenly talisman master was capable of solving an ancient talisman and creating their own talisman that was a major progression for the entire world of talismans and runes a heavenly talisman master was both a symbol of status and power as well as a kind of responsibility the other matter was that gongsan xuan's granddaughter gongsan zi was marrying the bloodkill hall's number one heavenly genius jai Wying. that news was very unexpected just what was going on just as she was going to marry Xia Chen, she suddenly chose to marry someone else. Even if Xia Chen had betrayed the spirit rune pavilion and broken things off with her, could she walk out of that shadow so quickly? Xia Chen hadn't even been found yet, so just what were they doing? While people didn't understand, they pretended as if there was nothing strange about it and came to congratulate them. When it came to this matter, understanding didn't matter. Their only goal was to form a good relationship with the spirit rune pavilion. Thus, they could simply act as if they had heard nothing about this. However, there was this one rumor. Since they were unable to capture Xia Chen, perhaps Gongsun Xuan was using Gongsun Zi's marriage as an attempt to lure him out. That was a loathsome method, filled with a despicable flavor. But the main thing was, would Xia Chen really fall for such a thing? Anyone with a brain wouldn't fall for such a thing. They had obviously set up a trap just for him. However, lately people had been hearing another name. It was the High Firmament Academy's youngest dean, the one who had repeatedly plundered the Soaring Dragon Company, the one who had slain countless lifeforms in the Chaotic Star Sea, and the one who had killed Yan Zhu's son. He was the vicious man known as Long Chen. Although they didn't know much about Long Chen, they had all heard of these matters. The rumors said that he was a crazy man who dared to do anything. Xia Chen might be able to endure, but it was different now that Long Chen had arrived. So many people had come to congratulate the spirit rune pavilion. But to be honest, they also wanted to see if this person known as Long Chen would dare to show up. Congratulations, congratulations! At the front of the palace was a group of elders. The leaders were the five heavenly talisman masters of this star field. Aha, it's all thanks to standing on the shoulders of seniors. We are all making small improvements compared to the blessings that our ancestors gave us. Of course, the pointers from U5 were also part of it. Come, come in. A tall and rather pudgy elder smiled and courteously invited them in. This was the pavilion master, Gongsen Pshuan. His eyes were small, making it seem like his eyes were squeezed shut all the time, as if he was always smiling. However, his smile was rather fake, just for the public to see. As he greeted his guests, he also eyed the surroundings. Music began to play at this time. After that, a woman with a phoenix crown and red cape walked in with a black-robed man. He was the Bloodkill Hall's number one genius, Jai Wying. He currently had a light smile and gazed in a certain direction. A sinister light also appeared in his eyes. The void he was looking at rumbled, and a ray of light shot over from the distance. Because of the commotion, everyone was startled and hastily looked over. Xia Chen, he really came. They saw three figures. The people didn't recognize the other two, but they instantly recognized Xia Chen. Dear fiancé, for your marriage, I don't bring much. But I hope you won't mind this little gift. Xia Chen was glaring at the dressed up Gong Sen Zi. Flames almost burst out of his eyes. He then waved his hand, causing three coffins to fall in front of the palace. Everyone was shocked. To send coffins during a wedding, it seemed that there would be no end until death. Gong Sun Zi slowly raised her veil, revealing a beautiful face. But despite being beautiful, 
her slightly high nose and thin lips did not give off a friendly feeling. Looking at her face, Long Chen only saw a woman who would use any means necessary for her goals, a woman who was so selfish that she could only ever love herself. Long Chen couldn't help sighing inside. Xia Chen, this fool, was completely immersed in runes, talismans, and formations. He had astounding talent in this regard, and yet his eyes couldn't see people clearly. He was actually tricked by such a woman. The three of them had just arrived when the grand formation was activated. Now, the entire spirit rune pavilion was covered in a barrier, and all the guests were locked inside. Xia Chen, I really admire you. How meticulous! There are three of you, and you brought three coffins. Not too few and not too many. Are you hoping that I will leave you an intact corpse? Sneered Gong Sun Zi. That sneer didn't contain the slightest emotion. No, these three coffins are for your family. Yu Ren shouted, and his voice suddenly changed, becoming a thunderous roar. Anyone who doesn't want to die should back up. Today us three brothers are starting a slaughter. Chapter 3649 of the experts present. There were at least nine half-step divine venerates. As for world kings, there were too many to count. Moreover, those who could come here were all major figures of the various powerful sects. So, when they heard Guo Ran's warning, they were startled and then laughed. You're clearly tortoises caught in a jar, yet you dare to say such big words. Youngsters really are interesting these days, said one elder mockingly. Read this novel and other amazing translated novels from the original source at the novel loom. Calm you. Yuo Ran was enraged and was about to kill him when Long Chen held him back. Leave it. Kindness cannot advise ghosts about to die. Let them do what they want. If a person wants to die, no one can stop them. Long Chen shook his head. Guo Ran had given them their warning. That was their chance. Whether or not they would grasp it was up to themselves. However, while these people had mocking expressions, they didn't have any intention of fighting. After all, this was a matter for the spirit rune pavilion. They were only in charge of watching the show. When Long Chen's group of three appeared, the spirit rune pavilion's grand formation was activated. Divine light continued to circulate, causing the pressure to grow increasingly powerful. But Long Chen's group didn't even seem to see the formation. Guo Ran's killing intent fully erupted. He was just waiting for Xia Chen's order to slaughter people. When Xia Chen looked at the sneering Gong Sun Zi, his body quivered slightly. The rage in his eyes ignited. Gong Sun Zi, I, Xia Chen, was truly blind. I was actually tricked by you. I was fully devoted to you, and I trusted you. But both you and your grandfather wanted to steal my soul seed and my body. Today, I will settle all our debts. Even Xia Chen's voice was quivering. He himself hadn't experienced that much. Ever since he had started following Long Chen, he had always been with his hot-blooded brothers in the Dragonblood Legion. He trusted every single one of them with his life, and they did the same with him. He had always thought that as long as he treated others sincerely, they would treat him the same. But he was wrong this time. His sincerity only brought him pain and anger. Xia Chen wasn't afraid of bleeding or danger. But this kind of betrayal and deceit was unacceptable, especially with how they had used his feelings. Gong Sun Zi smiled indifferently. Xia Chen, even at this moment, you're still acting like a victim. Do you think there's a point? Who would believe the words of a traitor who betrayed their sect and master? Don't waste the effort. Having committed such sins, even I cannot save you. If you have any sense of responsibility, just kill yourself. My time is very precious. As you can see, I have something very important to do today. Gong Sun Zi then held Jia Wang's arm tighter, looking at Xia Chen provokingly. Gong Sun Xuan sighed. 
Xia Chen, you've really disappointed me. I was originally planning on shut your mouth, you old shameless thing. You took the ancient talisman that I deciphered and the new talisman that I came up with to apply for your heavenly talisman master's status. You thieving liar, you aren't qualified to speak with me, shouted Xia Chen. Everyone was startled by those words, and they looked at Gong Sun Xuan in disbelief. However, Gong Sun Xuan's expression was still completely calm. He shook his head. Xia Chen, why bother? Before dying, do you simply have to damage my reputation first? I really don't understand why you would do this. I treated you like family, and my position was going to be yours. Just who made you do this? Tell me. If you have your own circumstances, then even if I have to bend the rules or give up my position as pavilion master, I will try to save your life. Gong Sun Xuan's lamenting appearance was perfect. Because of it, quite a few people were starting to feel angry on his behalf. Xia Chen, you're worse than an animal. The pavilion master treats you so well, and you still betray the spirit rune pavilion how can someone like you have the face to live in this world forgetting kindness repaying favor with enmity even a dog knows not to bite their master Badu, xia chen i've never seen someone as shameless as you come out and have a fair fight with me i'll take your dog life after gong sun xuan's speech countless experts of the junior generation stepped forward and cursed at xia chen saying all kinds of ugly words. Many of those had been Xia Chen's worshippers. Before this, they all treated him reverently, practically kneeling and worshipping the ground he walked on. However, today they were like a group of rabid dogs. They were dragging a former king out of his throne. All kinds of ugly displays were thrown Xia Chen's way. Seeing this, Xia Chen quivered with rage and Guo Ran clenched his fists tightly. Only Long Chen looked on calmly. Growth came at a price. Whether it was Guo Ran in the Heavenly Dragon Divine Armor College or Xia Chen in the Spirit Rune Pavilion, Long Chen saw some of their shortcomings. On the Martial Heaven Continent, under his wing, their Dragon Blood Legion was unrivaled. But in terms of actual living experience, they were still too immature. Because of that, Guo Ran was suppressed to the point of not daring to retaliate, while Xia Chen was unable to differentiate between good people and bad people. Thinking carefully, it seemed that as their boss, he hadn't done well enough for them. After suffering came knowledge. Sometimes you had to experience something in order to grow. Pain was your best teacher. After losing the things that you held precious, your youthfulness would be forcibly wiped away. That was the path that you had to traverse to grow. Seeing Xia Chen quivering, Long Chen decided to let him see this world's cruel and ugly side. Perhaps then he would understand how to differentiate between what was beautiful and what was ugly. He needed a pair of wise eyes to see through the falseness of others. Ah. Uh, Xia Chen suddenly let out a roar like an injured beast. That roar contained endless pain and fury. All you know is to howl. Is there a point to it? If you're in so much pain, then just kill yourself, sneered someone in the crowd. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning shot through the air without any thunder. It pierced that person's head, causing his smile to stiffen. After that, he collapsed. Since you want to die so badly, I'll help you out. Long Chen's expression was cold as he slowly lowered his finger. He truly loathed these brainless idiots. They didn't have much power, but they knew how to curse others. It was irritating. Long Chen had killed someone with a wave of his hand without any warning at all. Seeing this, the other experts were all shocked. They were talisman cultivators. They had to activate their soul energy before entering their combat state. An elder behind the person who was slain roared furiously. At this moment, runes flowed around him as he entered a combat state. He was that person's elder. Little brute, you dare. 
die zaya chan suddenly shouted and that elder's body directly exploded transforming into a rain of blood this this is heavenly soul locked talisman this sight shocked and horrified all the experts present even the half-step divine venerates expressions changed chapter three thousand six hundred fifty big words when they heard of the heavenly soul locked talisman all the experts expressions changed they stared at zaya chen in horror the heavenly soul locked talisman was rumored to be an ancient secret art almost all the major sects had records of the heavenly soul locked talisman but none of them were able to replicate it the legend had it that it was one of the highest core techniques of a talisman cultivator when a person's soul energy reached a certain limit and was even recognized by the soul of the heavenly Tao's with their mental energy they could control talismans from immense distances moreover those talismans could be their own or others legend had it that at the highest realm a single thought could kill millions of experts even in the desolate era when the human race finally climbed up and produced endless heavenly geniuses only a few people had reached the realm of the heavenly soul locked talisman as for after that ancient battle this kind of divine art basically became a legend whether or not it was even true was a question but Xia chen was able to cause that person's talismans to detonate from across space with just a shout that was clearly the effect of the heavenly soul locked talisman thus people were aghast if Xia chen even comprehended the heavenly soul locked talisman then people couldn't help looking at gongsen xuan they finally formed a bit of doubt about his words Xia chen was a peerless genius even the heavenly soul locked talisman that had befuddled the talisman world for countless years was solved by him then it seemed that solving an ancient talisman and creating an unprecedented talisman was also not that difficult for him on the other hand gong sun xuan hadn't made any advancements in so many years for him to suddenly become a heavenly talisman master truly did seem suspicious quite a few people put away their disdainful expressions and grew cautious they stealthily fell back those crafty fellows felt like they had caught a scent of something out of the ordinary Xia chen glared at gong sun zi i was very grateful to you for how well you treated me i have always repaid kindness with kindness enmity with enmity you supported me helping me in my cultivation in return i helped you solve so many talismans of the ancient era you could have become talisman grandmasters any time you wanted i've already repaid you for what you gave me as the favors between us are done let us discuss our enmities you told me to open the sacred land and set up a trap when i did so trying to take my body and spirit root there's nothing good to say about that today only one of us can live to see tomorrow's sun Xia chen clenched his teeth every word he said contained a powerful conviction he was innately a kind person but when a kind person was taken advantage of they became a ferocious beast the current him only had hatred in his heart gong sun zi shivered and felt a chill in her soul she had never thought that the always refined and amiable Xia Chen would suddenly become a wild devil. HMPH, such big words mean nothing. You have no proof. Whatever lies you make, they are baseless. Your lies will be uncovered later. Now that the grand formation has been activated, the three of you won't be able to escape, even if you grow wings. Are you slandering me before your death just to disgust me? sneered gong sun zi forcing herself to remain calm this novel is available on novel loon calm won't be able to escape even with wings Xia chen raised his head and laughed you're right even with wings you won't be able to escape do you still remember i told you that i was in the midst of studying the desolate era's yin yang heaven sealing talisman why don't you open your eyes and look more closely what is that talisman on the top of the formation? 
everyone curiously looked up they suddenly noticed that at some point a giant translucent diagram had appeared there it was a yin yang teji diagram however because it was very translucent it couldn't be seen without looking closely that teji diagram slowly spun and that spinning seemed to contain the cadence of life this taji diagram didn't give off any aura or pressure it didn't seem powerful at all however all those that saw it had their expressions change legend had it that the yin yang heaven sealing talisman was capable of sealing an entire world other than the actual master no one could break it unless you could exhaust an entire world's power there was no way to forcibly break it but if you did exhaust the world's power it would collapse and everyone inside would die with the world don't worry my yin yang heaven sealing talisman has less than a hundredth of the original talisman's power it can't contain an entire world it can't even contain the entire hidden dragon prefecture but it has enough power to control the spirit rune pavilion's grand formation all the formations within the spirit rune pavilion have lost their effect and their power is absorbed by the yin yang heaven sealing talisman if you want to leave you'll need to break the yin yang heaven sealing talisman but if you do all of that power will explode along with the spirit rune pavilions three hundred and sixty thousand formation disk foundations then everyone inside here will be blasted to smithereens sneered Zaya chen naturally the three of them had come prepared gong sunk shuen had set down a heaven encompassing net for Zaya chen but Zaya chen seemed to be worried that the net wasn't strong enough so he added another unbreakable layer it seems that you have confidence in yourselves said gong sunk shuen his voice was still calm as if everything was under control of course we're full of confidence long chen finally spoke xia chen was too angry at this moment so long chen had no choice but to step in this child was too emotional and it might affect the fighting in a moment gong sun chuen finally looked at long chen he indifferently said i forgot about you since you weren't saying anything i didn't expect the number one academy of the nine heavens and ten lands to make a child like you dean long chen smiled the future of the immortal world belongs to the young as for old men like you who refuse to die you act sanctimoniously while holding a belly of evil tricks it really is a misfortune for the spirit rune pavilion to be led by a pavilion master who robs men and prostitutes women a shame such a shame how is it a shame snorted gong sun and disdainfully it's a shame that the spirit rune pavilion could be so lucky as to survive the battle of the desolate era only to end in such a peaceful era don't you feel that it's a shame asked long chen ah uh, gong sun and laughed big words you want to destroy my spirit rune pavilion little brat you don't even know that your death is at hand Laughable you say that my words are big i feel like you're the one saying big words you're even more arrogant than me those who say that my death is at hand have long since gone to see a yama king let's stop wasting time with words and acts weren't you precisely stalling to mobilize other forces if you use some old fellows and attack together you can reduce the damage here to a minimum don't worry i will give you ample time even if all of you attack at once it's no problem i already gave all of you your chance to survive if you can't grasp it don't blame me i don't mind killing everyone in the formation it doesn't matter what trump card you have or what sinister scheme you cooked up bring them all out today us three brothers will show you what it means for schemes to be absolutely meaningless in front of real power long chen's gaze swept over the crowd grandly you really do say big words pavilion master i'm sorry but i can't wait any longer this long chen's head is mine 
Jai Wine finally lost patience. His figure suddenly vanished from his original location. Chapter 3651 Supreme Bone vs. Supreme Bone When Jai Wine's figure vanished, Guo Ran suddenly shot into motion. His right hand then smashed into the void, causing a huge hole to appear in the void. The moment the void was destroyed, Jai Wying's figure came tumbling out like a shooting star. He smashed into a building, blowing it apart. What? Everyone was startled by this sudden turn of events. It was so fast that they couldn't even react. Jai Wying said that he wanted to kill Long Chen, but in truth, his target was Guo Ran. However, he hadn't expected that even before his sneak attack landed, he would be sent flying by a punch from Guo Ran. Fuck, do you think that I'm a weakling? Your little bit of spatial energies, child's play in front of me. Idiot, have a taste of your grandpa Guo Ran's wrath. Guo Ran stamped on the air, shooting after Jai Wying. But all of a sudden, Guo Ran's body twisted. He actually switched direction and punched the void once more. Boot. Cracks spread throughout the void. After that, Jai Wang's figure appeared from it, and he was blown back by Guo Ran once again. Everyone was shocked. Jai Wang's movement art made him seem like a phantom, but Guo Ran was able to find his location like a prophet. How is he doing this? Even Xia Chen was surprised. When Xia Chen was hunted by Jai Wang, he experienced just how terrifying Jai Wang's spatial energy was. There were countless times where he had almost died to Jai Wang's sword. Guo Ran's supreme bone comes from an expert of the All Devil race, and their supreme bones might have formed resonance. Also, just in terms of the auras of their supreme bones, Guo Ran's supreme bone far surpasses Jai Wang's. Most likely, Jai Wang's supreme bone is still in a state of slumber. Although his spatial energy is mysterious, he can only use it to move in a straight line, and he relies on supplementary movement arts to be nimble. But as soon as he does, Guo Ran can accurately sense where he is coming from, said Long Chen. Guo Ran repeatedly swung his arm, blocking Jai Wang's sharp blade just like that. Every clash unleashed a metallic ringing that shook people's ears. It had to be known that this bone from all devil Tianai was unbreakable. Even the Mingong saber was unable to damage it, so it could be seen just how shockingly hard it was. Guo Ran directly blocked Jai Wang's attack with it. Others were unaware that Guo Ran's arm was a supreme bone. They were dumbfounded. Jai Wang was wielding a world domain divine item but Guo Ran was capable of blocking it barehanded. Upon seeing this, their jaws dropped. Guo Ran had only mobilized his right hand, and his left hand was still behind his back. He sneered. If I used two hands, it would be bullying you. My left hand's power is ten times greater than my right hand's. If you can force me to use my left hand, I'll count it as your victory. This fellow's bragging was always unreliable. If he dared to stick out his left hand, it would instantly be cut off. However, Guo Ran truly appeared unrivaled at this moment. With a single punch, even the heavenly Daos quivered. No one dared to question his words. Most importantly, in people's hearts, true experts wouldn't just brag. Regretfully, the one they encountered today was a shameless fellow. When Guo Ran bragged that his left hand was even stronger, it resulted in quite a few people believing it. It can be hard to make great work when it's stolen from novel loon. Come bullshit. Jai Wying furiously cursed him. With just a few probing blows, he found that this seemingly weak fellow actually possessed a supreme bone. He clearly remembered that last time, this fellow had sneak attacked him and relied entirely on his battle armor to fight. How did he suddenly become a supreme expert today? If Guo Ran were to say that he had been hiding his power, Jai Wying wouldn't believe it. 
If Kyo Ran had used the Supreme Bone's power in that sneak attack, he would have definitely seriously wounded Jai Wai. The latter might not have been able to escape. However, he would never have dreamt that this supreme genius was actually made artificially. Kyo Ran's bragging shocked and infuriated him. No matter what movement Art Jai Wai used, Guo Ran always found him. He was somehow able to accurately pinpoint Jai Wying's location. Jai Wying's ephemeral spatial arts were dull in front of Guo Ran, and that infuriated him. As an assassin, he needed to rely on assassination arts to slay his opponents. It was a most profound, effortless way to kill someone. This was an assassin's creed and the standard practice for an assassin. They didn't face their opponents directly. If they didn't succeed in their sneak attack, they would distance themselves, vanishing until the opponent's guard was lowered or another opening appeared to kill them in one blow. When assassins killed people, they needed precise control over the environment, weather, skill, fluctuations of the human heart, and many other areas. They would only attack when they had an opportunity, and if they didn't have that opportunity, they would create it. Assassins needed absolute cool, but when Long Chen saw Jai Wang furiously cursing, he was surprised. This was the Blood Kill Hall's number one heavenly genius. He immediately started having suspicions. He didn't know much about Jai Wang, but he did understand in Puda. Would he really raise such an idiot disciple? A huge explosion then caused the world to change color, and the entire formation quivered. This was a frontal clash of pure power without any tricks. As a result, powerful astral winds buffeted the spirit rune pavilion. Even with the formations protecting them, countless buildings seemed to be on the verge of crumbling. Because of it, the expressions of the spirit rune pavilion's experts changed. A direct clash already? Long Chen frowned even harder. Suddenly, a world appeared behind Jai Wai. That world contained a giant hand that covered the heavens, and it reached out while emitting endless spatial energy. After that, sacred light descended from atop the nine heavens, illuminating Jai Wai's body. He seemed to have become the son of heaven and earth, the one blessed with all the world's favor. The next moment, the hand holding his sword became as white as jade, and grand Dao runes appeared on top of it. Supreme Bone. Navaloon, calm startled, cries rang out. Jai Wying was starting to utilize the Supreme Bone's full power, so they finally sensed its aura. Even for the old monsters present, this was their first time seeing Supreme Bone. The appearance of a Supreme Bone caused the world to change color and the ten thousand Daos to roar. It was a terrifying sight. However, Huo Ran was delighted to see Jai Wying do this. The most fearful aspect of Jai Wying was his assassination arts. But after being beaten back several times, this fellow actually forgot about his status as an assassin, wanting to rely on brute force. That was basically helping Guo Ran. Even so, Guo Ran kept his expression neutral. He still had one hand behind his back even as Jai Wang's power crazily soared. Keep working hard. Bring out your full power. As for myself, I still won't use my left hand, said Guo Ran calmly. His arm quivered, and explosive power burst out as if an ancient beast was awakening. Suddenly, Jai Wang and Guo Ran shouted at the same time, in front of countless horrified gazes. They smashed into each other like two shooting stars. Both of their powers erupted to their peaks. It was a simple and explosive clash. Chapter 3652 The Death of Jai Wang Boom The earth quivered. The clash between supreme bones unleashed a ripple that instantly destroyed countless buildings in the spirit rune pavilion. Only a small portion of the buildings was able to survive the wave of destruction, and it was because countless formation rooms lit up, blocking the impact partially. As for the experts present, they weren't so fortunate. 
even as they clutched talismans in their hands and set up layers of defences they were still blasted apart in front of the power unleashed by these two those protective talismans were unable to provide the slightest protection only top experts were able to block the wave of destruction when the gusts settled they saw Guo Ran's arm quivering, holding Jai Wang's sword. Jai Wang's sword was also quivering. It appeared as if he was trying to shake off Guo Ran, but was unable to. At this moment, waves of killing intent came from their supreme bones. It was as if their two supreme bones were fighting instead of them. The aura of supreme bones filled the air and terrified people, forcing them to be reverential. The supreme bones seemed to represent the world's peak power. Find the original at Navalun. Come at this moment. Jai Wang suddenly raised his head and roared. His hair billowed chaotically as if he was a wild devil beast. He then pulled on his sword with all his might. However, no matter what he did, that sword didn't move in the slightest. It was like it had fused with Gyo Ran's hand. Gyo Ran shook his head. You are the Bloodkill Hall's number one expert. What a fake title. I'll send you on your way. Yu Ran's left leg shot out like lightning, attacking Jai Wang's abdomen. At that moment, black armor covered his leg. Jai Wang's expression completely changed. He hastily let go of his sword to dodge, but he didn't expect that even before Guo Ran's kick landed, it would shoot a ray of divine light and strike him in his abdomen. Seeing this scene, Long Chen shook his head. Although this surprise attack was great, as an expert of the Bloodkill Hall, no matter how trashy Jai Wang was, there was no way he couldn't dodge it. Other than having a supreme bone, this fellow was garbage in all other aspects. Startled cries rang out from the survivors. Once Jai Wying's abdomen was pierced, Guo Ran pressed the attack, refusing to spare him. Divine light burst out of Guo Ran's feet, and he shot forward, reaching Jai Wying in an instant with a punch. Boom! Jai Wying now had a terrified expression. Panicked, he formed one-handed seals and vanished. But just as he did, Guo Ran punched the space beside him, resulting in Jai Wang's figure reappearing except for the half of his body that was obliterated by Guo Ran's punch. His spatial energy was unable to escape the senses of Guo Ran's supreme bone. Guo Ran always found him. After being struck by Guo Ran's punch, Jai Wang's remaining body began to wither. Terrifying Devil Kai spread throughout his body. It had to be known that Guo Ran's supreme bone had posed a great deal of trouble for Long Chen as well. Even with the primal chaos beads' help, he had spent a great deal of effort to dispel the devil, Kai, that had struck him. Even Long Chen's terrifying physical body was unable to deal with it. As for Jai Wying, considering that he was fleeing, he didn't have any defenses up so this punch had taken his life. Jai Wang's body slowly faded away. It was like it was being incinerated. Jai Wang screamed in terror, but he only had half of his body, and now it was starting to fade. He then smacked his face with his hand, trying to reject the devil Kai. As a result, just touching his face caused his head to explode. At that moment, it wasn't just Guo Ran that was dumbfounded. Long Chen, Xia Chen, and the others were also dumbfounded. Guo Ran, be careful in the future. If a mosquito bites your face, don't be so stupid as to slap it with your right hand, warned Long Chen. Guo Ran was shaken. Jai Wying was so anxious that he forgot about his own supreme bone. In his explosive state, he ended up using his hand to strike his own face. After all, Guo Ran still didn't have absolute control over his supreme bum. If he slapped his own face, would it also cause his head to explode? Jai Wying had killed himself with his own hand. Even the old monsters that had lived for countless years never saw such a thing. They couldn't even believe it. 
a supreme genius ultimately died to his own hand. People couldn't help looking at Guo Ran, who, from the start to the end, still had one hand behind his back. From start to finish, Guo Ran appeared to possess the calmness and grace of a powerful expert. It was as if everything was under his control, and it made him appear suave and handsome. Guo Ran was pleased inside at having those people stare at him. He had a feeling as if he could look down on the rest of the world. Just then, Jai Wying's corpse suddenly moved and everyone jumped in shock. Guo Ran's expression also changed. He then rushed to Jai Wying's body, slashing his saber and cutting off his hand. That hand was his supreme bone. However, what shocked Guo Ran was that the supreme bone's runes rapidly dimmed. It corroded, transforming into a puddle of blood. Ah, uh, my supreme bone. How can this be? Guo Ran almost cried. He had thought it through. In the future, he would have a right arm supreme bone and a left hand supreme bone. With those two, just who would he have to fear in this life? However, just as he was enjoying everyone's gaze on him, this supreme bone suddenly rutted. Something's strange about Jai Wai. But we'll discuss it later. We have more important things to do right now. Long Chen eyed the rotted corpse, and his gaze was surprisingly solemn. However, he had to get Guo Ran back on track. Things weren't over yet. Jai Wang was dead. His death was fishy and a bit bizarre. Because of this, Gong Sun Zi and Gong Sun Xuan's expressions weren't very good. Long Chen saw their unease and fear. The power that Guo Ran displayed shocked them. It went without saying that Guo Ran's display was absolutely outstanding this time. After all, he had defeated Jai Wying effortlessly. In truth, it was all due to Jai Wying being an idiot. He was practically cooperating with Guo Ran the entire time. Guo Ran didn't specialize in long-range combat, especially not without his battle armor. Hence, as long as Jai Wying didn't use his supreme bone and simply made Guo Ran lose track of him, then no matter how trash his assassination arts were, it would make Guo Ran uncomfortable. However, this fellow, an assassin, actually chose to use his weakest area to fight someone's strongest area. It could be said that Jai Wang had used his life for Guo Ran to beautifully accomplish his act. Even with Long Chen's intelligence, he was unable to tell just what kind of existence Jai Wang was. Just what was he thinking? Long Chen was still befuddled. Now, Gong Sun Chu and Gong Sun Zi, it's time to settle the enmity between us, announced Zaya Chen. Gong Sun Chu and sneered, A traitor like you thinks that you can change the truth just because you found a few helpers. Do you think that I'm not prepared? Suddenly, Gong Sun Chu and waved his hand, and tens of thousands of buildings within the Spirit Rune Pavilion lit up. Those buildings that weren't destroyed were actually formation disks. They all exploded now, unleashing a wave of divine light that locked onto the three of them. Chapter 3653 Enormous Irony Every building erupted with a terrifying aura. After that, millions of runes lit up like millions of eyes, unleashing light that bound Long Chen and the others. Zaya Chen, you know how terrifying the Spirit Rune Pavilion's foundation is. I already set up an unbreakable net for you. Do you think a single yin yang heaven sealing talisman can let you secure victory? I simply didn't want to make a big fuss over things. But now, HMPH, what shouldn't be destroyed has been destroyed. I have no further misgivings. Jai Wang really was trash. The number one heavenly genius of the Blood Kill Hall is inferior to even a third-rate assassin. In all my years, I've never seen such an idiot. But that's fine. His death won't change anything, and it certainly won't change your fates, sneered Gong Sun Chuan. Zaya Chen, for the sake of our past love, if you are willing to reform, my spirit rune pavilion is willing to accept you. 
we can forget the past grudge, and I'll treat it as if you didn't do anything. We can get along once more, proposed Gong Sun Zi. Ah, oh, oh. Zaya Chen laughed furiously. My eyes have been opened to the world. The two of you are the most shameless people I've ever met, bar none. I was clearly the one harmed by you, and yet you make it sound like you're the victims. Are you hell-bent on protecting your masks? And will you keep using this mask to trick others? You're overthinking it. After today, there will no longer be a spirit rune pavilion, nor will there be a Gongsun Chuan and Gongsun Zi. Gongsun Zi's originally calm expression instantly grew cold. Since you want to die so badly, don't blame me for not giving you a chance. At this moment, the spirit rune pavilion's entire grand formation shuddered. Sharp swords condensed and pointed at the three of them. Even so, Bzeya Chen, Guo Ran, and Long Chen's expressions remained calm. They didn't show the slightest fear, nor did they seem to have any intention of blocking or dodging. They just stared at Gong San Zi and Gong San Chuan nonchalantly. Seeing their expressions, the two of them felt a chill run through them. Kill them. For some reason, Gong San Zi felt increasingly uneasy inside. As her fear grew, her face twisted and she directly gave the order. However, even after a while, the sharp swords merely pointed at Xia Chen's group of three. No attack was launched. What? Gong San Chuan and Gong San Zi were shocked by this. Gong San Chuan also shouted, Attack! Likewise, even after several breaths of time, other than the rumbling of the grand formation, everything was deathly silent. The most frightening thing was that the air suddenly became calm. Everyone was shocked. Just what was going on? Xia Chen looked at the bewildered Gong Sen Xuan and Gong Sen Zi. Do you know just how foolish you are? Due to your help, I did my best to research all kinds of runes. For over half a year, I'd have been constantly strengthening the grand formation, so I know how to operate it. Also, on the surface, you told me that it was a preventative measure to block the pressure from the Clear River Gate, Talisman Life Path, Heavenly Talisman Sect, and others. But I knew you had wild ambitions. In the past few years, they have been secretly suppressing the Spirit Rune Pavilion. Unluckily for them, you are a vengeful person, and this is all your preparation to devour them. Quite a few elders here looked grave when they heard that. They couldn't help looking at Gongsun Xuan. Gongsun Xuan furiously shouted, Don't listen to his nonsense. He's trying to start a fight between us. Xia Chen ignored Gongsun Xuan and continued, Other than helping you decode all kinds of talismans, I also spent all day thinking about how to strengthen the grand formation. I knew that I would have to leave the Spirit Rune Pavilion one day, but I was hoping to turn the Spirit Rune Pavilion into the uncontested overlord of the Heavenly Talisman Starfield before I left. That way, no one could bully you, and I could follow my boss with a free heart. For that purpose, I spent day and night studying, constantly making improvements. But you didn't know about this. I was hoping to give you a nice surprise one day, but I didn't expect you two to be the ones to give me the surprise. You deceived me. What I hate most are swindlers. Zaya Chen was clenching his teeth, his face distorted with hatred. Every warrior in the Dragonblood Legion was brave and fearless even in the face of death, but cheating and deceit were intolerable to them. You don't need to keep shouting. Those people in control of the Grand Formation are already dead. The only one capable of controlling the Grand Formation now is myself. Xia Chen took out a refined formation disc. Smaller formation discs were normally the size of a palm, while the larger ones might be the size of a chessboard. However, this one was only the size of a walnut and was carved with runes even finer than a single strand of hair. Other than the Heaven Shrouding Defense Formation, all of the Spirit Rune Pavilion's core formations are under my command. Since the Heaven Shrouding Defense, 
formation has my yin yang heaven ceiling talisman on it everything within the pavilion is under my control now do you understand just who is the tortoise caught in a jar asked zaya chen coldly gong sun zi slipped a hand behind her back zaya chen caught that little movement and sneered you don't believe me keep trying you'll then know what despair is gong sun zi's expression grew uglier and uglier she was trying to link up with the formation discs in all the buildings but was not having any luck just as Saya Chen said, control over the formations was out of their hands. Gong Sun Zi stealthily glanced at Gong Sun Xuan. However, just like her, Gong Sun Xuan was bewildered. He had no idea what to do in this situation. Saya Chen then looked at the refined formation disc in his hand. A touch of pain appeared on his face. See, do you know? This was originally the gift I was going to give you look your name is carved on the bottom it's also your favorite pink color zaya chen turned the formation disc over as he said z's name was carved into it furthermore a beautiful flower design was around the characters zaya chen had designed it meticulously gong san z looked at her name there and instantly wept only now did she realize just how foolish she had acted I wanted to repay the Spirit Rune Pavilion, but ultimately the Spirit Rune Pavilion will be destroyed by my hands. The gift that I was going to give you has now become the tool I'll use to kill you. What an irony! The heavens truly toy with man. Zaya Chen's voice was heavy, containing immense pain. Zaya Chen, I. Gong Sun Zi choked back her sobs. Suddenly, the grand formation shuddered and rays of divine light shot out. People amongst the crowd were struck and instantly killed, wiped out of existence. Hundreds of them died just like that. It happened so suddenly that everyone inside panicked, staring in horror at Zaya Chen. Don't worry. The people I killed were the ones who insulted me just now, saying that I should be killed. As for the rest of you, as long as you don't mess around, I won't take your lives, said Zaya Chen coldly. After saying that, Zaya Chen looked at Gong San Xuan. He slowly raised the formation disc in his hand. Just as Zaya Chen raised the formation disc, a talisman suddenly shot out of Gong San Xuan's hand. Heaven and earth shuddered. Heaven shaking talisman. Startled cries rang out. They instantly recognized the divine talisman that Gong Sun Xuan was famous for. The heaven-shaking talisman reached Zaya Chen in an instant, not giving him any chance to react. When you're just trying to make great content at Navalun, come, but then, a mocking smile appeared on Zaya Chen's face. The formation disc in his hand quivered ever so slightly, and a rainbow-colored barrier appeared before his body. Chapter 3654 The True Heaven Shaking Talisman Bang The predicted heaven shaking explosion didn't occur. The heaven shaking talisman, whose name shook the heavenly talisman Starfield, only let out a depressed sound before being devoured by the light barrier. But everyone was shocked, especially the elders. They were very familiar with the heaven shaking talisman's power. In his prime, Gong Sun Xuan relied on the secret art to defeat a lot of experts. It had saved him from crises multiple times. Moreover, ever since Gong Sun Xuan had comprehended it, he had spent all his time researching how to improve its power. It could be said that his heaven shaking talismans had exceeded those made by his ancestors. A talisman on the level of the heaven-shaking talisman was something that even Gong Sun Chuan needed to spend several months on to create a single one. After the inscription process, it required the nourishment of his soul and the spiritual Kai of heaven and earth. Hence, after months spent on the inscription, the talisman was nourished for three years before it could reach its maximum potential. Also, a heaven-shaking talisman required a huge amount of soul energy to detonate. A half-step divine venerate like Gong Sun Xuan was only able to detonate a single one at a time. 
it can be hard to make great work when it's stolen from Novelun come the talismans here were different from the ones found in the outside world most people might see others simply tossing out hundreds or thousands of talismans at once as those talismans filled the air they truly appeared glorious however true experts of the talisman dow didn't buy talismans made by others and they only used their own talismans in their hands those talismans could unleash the greatest power the stronger the talisman the greater the requirements for using it for example the amount of soul energy required to activate them increased and they could not be used lightly hence despite gonsen xuen's fame only a very few people had actually seen him use his heaven-shaking talisman today so many people were bearing witness to the heaven-shaking talisman however the expected power didn't show itself so people were dumbfounded the heaven-shaking talisman is a kind of ancestral talisman one of the first talismans it can be developed into thousands of different variants i once warned you that you had taken the wrong path you only reached the lowest level the power looks immense but cannot be concentrated so what's the point if you didn't turn back it would be too late however you cursed me saying that i was conceited saying that i couldn't see your death I'll show you what the true heaven-shaking talisman is now. Zaya Chen suddenly swung his hand, and a talisman shot out. Compared to Gongsun Xuan's attack, this talisman was silent, without any aura. From it, not a trace of the mighty heaven-shaking power from Gongsun Xuan's talisman could be felt. However, the expressions of the senior generation completely changed. That talisman was like a thunderous gust, and yet it didn't cause any spatial friction. Instead, it seemed that the power of the friction was absorbed by the talisman. Heaven shielding talisman. Gong Sun Xuan roared and clapped his hands together. After that, a talisman appeared between his hands, and he spat a mouthful of blood onto the talisman. A blood colored barrier then manifested around him. In that instant, Gongsun Xuan seemed to have aged a great deal. He had clearly spent a great deal of essence blood to strengthen his talisman's power. That meant that he sensed a mortal threat. Ooh! Runes flew about, shaking people's ears. After that, a heaven shaking explosion drowned out all other sounds. All that remained where the explosion occurred was a twisted space. The runes fluttered like beautiful petals and slowly settled. When people's vision was restored, they saw Gongsun Xuan. His hands were still clasped in front of him, and his blood colored barrier was still covering him. He blocked it. Gongsun Xuan really is powerful. The senior experts could tell that Zaya Chen's heaven shaking talisman was clearly a level stronger than Gongsun Xuan's. Gong Sun Chuan's heaven shaking talisman had unleashed an explosion that caused quite a bit of energy to scatter. Although it looked amazing, it reduced its power a great deal. As for Zaya Chen's heaven shaking talisman, its power was concentrated. Obviously, the latter was harder to block. From the displays of both of their heaven shaking talismans, it was clear that while Zaya Chen's heaven shaking talisman possessed less power than Gongsun Xuan's, its power was concentrated and definitely had greater destructive power. However, for Gongsun Xuan to be able to block Zaya Chen's attack even after expending the energy for his own heaven shaking talisman, he was clearly strong. Just as everyone was sighing in amazement, a sound pierced their ears. They saw Gongsen Xuan's barrier cracking. What? Startled cries rang out. As the barrier cracked, Gongsen Xuan's body also cracked. Blood began to gush out of those cracks. Gongsen Xuan looked at his cracking barrier and body. He then slowly looked back at Gongsen Zi. Gongsen Zi let out a heart wrenching cry and threw herself at Gongsen Xuan. Gong Sun Xuan also tried to reach out as if he wanted to touch her face, but his body didn't hold on for that long. He shattered, his life coming to an end. 
Zaya Chen's heaven-shaking talisman was the true heaven-shaking talisman. He didn't have more soul energy than Gongsun Xuan, but his talisman's power was on par with Gongsun Xuan's. Most importantly, its power was concentrated completely onto Gongsun Xuan's body. Grandpa, you can't die. If you die, I'll have nothing. How am I supposed to live if you die? Gong Sun Zi held Gong Sun Xuan's corpse and wailed. Seeing this, Long Chen's face was cold, and he slowly raised a finger. As for Guo Ren, he took the initiative, sending his black saber piercing toward Gong Sun Zi's heart. But all of a sudden, a talisman flew out and knocked aside Guo Ren's saber. Xia Chen Yu. Guo Ren was startled. Xia Chen was the one to block him. Brother, thank you. But I'll handle my own affairs. I don't want you to carry a bad reputation. Xia Chen shook his head and patted Guo Ran's shoulder. He knew that Guo Ran was willing to take on this burden for him. Guo Ran was worried that Xia Chen wouldn't be able to do this. Guo Ran then looked at Long Chen, who indicated for him to remain silent. They would leave things to Xia Chen. Gong Sun Zi was lost in her grief. She seemed to not realize what had just happened. She still knelt over Gong Sun Xuan's corpse, tears covering her face. That appearance was truly pitiable. Seeing Xia Chen walking toward Gong Sun Zi, quite a few people couldn't bear to watch. But before they could say anything, their elders told them to stay silent with their eyes. If you had known that this day would come, would you have made the same decision? I was fully devoted to you, and you repaid me with a deceit. Xia Chen walked over to Gong Sun Zi and sighed. Gong Sun Zi stood while crying. She no longer had her icy and overbearing air, and she seemed to have become a weak little girl. Even as she wept, she said, I'm sorry, I've let you down. You can kill me now. If there is another life, I am willing to be your horse just to repay my sins. A sword appeared in Xia Chen's hand and mercilessly stabbed through Gong Sun Zi's chest. Yu. Gong Sun Zi looked at Xia Chen in disbelief. The grief in her eyes vanished, replaced with shock, hatred, and unwillingness. Chapter 3655 Scheming Woman Search Novelum Com for the Original isn't this what you wanted? Why are you blaming me? Xia Chen looked at Gong Sun Zi coldly. You really are a scheming woman, frighteningly so. You are so selfish that you are willing to sacrifice everything else. Before this, I thought that you were manipulated by your grandfather. Now, I find that it was all your idea. Just now, you were colluding with Gong Sun Xuan to attack me together. Gong Sun Xuan would draw my attention while you captured my brother, Guo Ran. You specialize in the world shifting soul lock talisman. With a sneak attack, you have an 80% chance of managing to transport Guo Ran to your side and capture him. If you succeeded, even if it wouldn't count as a victory, you would at least have a way out. You both agreed to this plan, but when your grandfather attacked, you didn't do anything because you were afraid. You weren't afraid of Guo Ran or me, but of Boss Long Chen. That's because I told you that there is no one in the Nine Heavens and Ten Lands who is a match for my boss in the same realm. No one can play tricks on him. Thus, although you agreed to the plan, you didn't act according to it. When your grandfather attacked, you didn't make your move. Your grandfather thought that you were waiting for a better chance, but when he was defending and he still didn't do anything, he realized the truth. He's nothing good either. Despite knowing that he was going to die, he wanted to expose you. But you were quite vicious, directly throwing yourself at him to make sure his last breath ran out as quickly as possible. He will never be able to say the truth now. Then you started crying and putting on a show. You know me. You know that with your grandfather dead, I've obtained my revenge. Then, once I left, the spirit ruined pavilion will be yours. 
to exchange your grandfather for so many benefits, your scheming really is brilliant. When Zaya Chen said this, the experts present sucked in a cold gasp of air. This kind of scheming was simply too terrifying, wasn't it? Even these old foxes didn't feel like they were capable of this. Even though they had spent a lifetime scheming, there was no way they would be able to react so quickly and come up with such a scheme on the spot. They had no doubt about Zaya Chen's words. One reason was that Zaya Chen didn't need to lie. The other reason was that they had also sensed the spiritual fluctuations between this granddaughter and grandfather. They knew that these two had been scheming something. However, the greatest evidence was Bon Sun Chuen's furious expression right before his death. They had felt it to be very odd. Now, they knew that it was because Gong Sun Zi had used and deceived him. He had mostly likely realized it before his death and wanted to expose her, only for Gong Sun Zi to silently put him down. He didn't manage to say anything before his death. Now, Thinking back to all of Gong Sun Zi's methods, everyone couldn't help feeling a chill down their spines. Her scheming ability was terrifying. In fact, they hoped for Gong Sun Zi to quickly die now. If she were to control the spirit rune pavilion, then it seemed that those with bad relationships to the spirit rune pavilion would be schemed to death one by one. She was terrifying. Saya Chen, listen to me, it's not like that, Gong Sun Zi pleaded. She still wanted to defend herself. However, Saya Chen didn't give her that chance. I am also someone who likes to use smarts. Although I wouldn't say that I've reached my boss's level, I wouldn't lose to others. The reason that I so foolishly let myself be used by you is because I loved you. My boss told me that after loving someone, there's no need to use your brain. Now that I think back to it, I really am foolish. There were so many obvious questionable areas all this time, but I still chose to trust you. However, I should thank you. You're the first woman I loved. You taught me the evil in people's hearts, and you also taught me how to distinguish whether a woman is good or bad. Zaya Chen, please, I don't want to die. Give me a chance. Bong Sun Zi wept. This time, it was no act. She really was terrified and did not want to die. Like I said, would you have made the same decisions if you had known that this day would come? In truth, this is the path you made yourself walk step by step. Even when I came straight here, you refused to admit to your sins. You resisted with all your power. Otherwise, I would have only crippled your cultivation base. But for you to even scheme against your own grandfather, I don't even know how many people you would scheme to death in the future. You are the one who sealed your own fate, said Zaya Chen, shaking his head. Zaya Chen, I'll change. Mountains and rivers change, but people don't. I can't give you that chance. Did you ever give those people you schemed to death a chance? Just go in peace. In your next life, don't always scheme against others. Maybe you'll be happier then. After that, Zaya Chen pulled out his sword. Gong Sun Zi's body quivered and then slowly collapsed. The aura of her life slowly dissipated. Looking at Gong Sun Zi's expression in death, People couldn't help shaking their heads. Just before this, she had such an expression of pitiful pain. But after death, her face was twisted with malevolence. A person's nature was simply their nature. Some people had felt pity for her and wanted to say something. Thinking back, those people now felt cold sweat drip down their backs. If Gong Sun Zi did live, Perhaps they would die in the future without even realizing it. Suddenly, Zaya Chen held Gong Sun Zi's corpse and wept. Hua ran and Long Chen sighed. People all said that their first love was the most beautiful. But Zaya Chen's first love was the most cruel. He had personally killed the person that he once loved. That was truly cruel. 
The experts present were silent as they watched Zaya Chenwi. The people from the Spirit Rune Pavilion in particular had no words. These two had been the heavenly couple of the Spirit Rune Pavilion, the ones who could have brought them to an unprecedented glory. Now, unforeseen events turned that into nothing more than an illusion. That feeling of having reality change so much was indescribable. Even then, no one dared to move. The yin-yang heaven-sealing talisman was still trapping them here, and no one could leave. Zaya Chen still possessed the power to kill all of them. After crying, Zaya Chen slowly calmed down. Long Chen then patted him on the shoulder, and Zaya Chen took a deep breath. Boss, I'm fine. Since it's the past, let it pass. I believe that there's a kind woman waiting for me. Long Chen was relieved to hear that Zaya Chen hadn't given up on himself. Yuo Ran joked, just one. I have a premonition that I'll have at least three beauties. Otherwise, I won't be able to stand by boss's side. After laughing, the depressing air had mostly faded. Having settled his emotions, Zaya Chen looked over everyone. I have an important matter to announce to everyone today. This matter relates to the future of the entire heavenly talisman star field. Starting today, the Spirit Rune Pavilion's sacred land is open to the entire heavenly talisman star field. What? Zaya Chen's words completely shocked countless experts. Chapter 3656 Disgrace People Couldn't Believe Their Ears, Especially the Experts from the Spirit Rune Pavilion. The pavilion master was already dead. Was Zaya Chen still not willing to let the spirit rune pavilion off? Zaya Chen, we are willing to worship you as pavilion master. But you can't share the sacred treasure that our ancestors left behind with the public. That, that really is unbearable. One of the spirit rune pavilion's elders couldn't help stepping forward. That's right. You're our new pavilion master. Everything here is yours, so there's no need to do this, cried out another elder. To them, what was important wasn't who the pavilion master was. What was important was that the giant tree known as the Spirit Rune Pavilion didn't collapse. It had to be known that if the Spirit Rune Pavilion's sacred land was opened to the public, tens of thousands of ancient talismans and tomes would be lost. The talismans of the desolate era were priceless treasures left behind by their ancestors, so how could they be shared with the public? This proposal of Zaya Chen's moved the hearts of the other sects. However, they didn't dare to randomly speak here. The spirit rune pavilion's sacred land had been locked for countless years. That was why, while they did desire it, they had never thought of obtaining this ancient inheritance. Ever since the gate to the sacred land was opened, these powers started forming a good relationship with the Spirit Rune Pavilion. Their goal was obvious. The fact that the Spirit Rune Pavilion had opened their holy land practically set it in stone that they would rise to the top of the heavenly talisman star field. It was only a matter of time. If these sects sucked up to them now, they would still be in time. Hopefully, their sects wouldn't eventually be erased due to not having a good relationship with this future overlord. This was also why Gongsun Xuan and Gongsun Zi had chosen to use this occasion to make a move on Xia Chen. They had been hoping to use these people to deal with him together. After all, it was a chance for them to show their loyalty. However, nothing went as they had hoped. This particular scheme had ended before even starting. In any case, these people truly were moved by the thought of obtaining the treasures within the sacred land. In truth, there's no need for junior brother Zaya Chen to do this. All talisman cultivators are a family. If there's anything that one doesn't understand, everyone can study it together. Opening up the secrets of the spirit rune pavilion does seem a bit inappropriate, said a half-step divine venerate. 
Read the most updated version of this novel and other amazing translated novels from the original source at Novelone. Come after all. The Spirit Room Pavilion possesses the most ancient inheritance of the heavenly talisman Starfield. It needs its own solid foundation, said another elder. All of them were courteous. They were clearly saying that they wouldn't be so greedy. They didn't want to offend the Spirit Rune Pavilion. Just sharing a few talismans would be more than enough. Their goal was to get some soup, while the Spirit Rune Pavilion took the meat. On the other hand, the expressions of the experts from weaker sects weren't very good. If this happened, they probably wouldn't get any benefits. Let alone soup, they wouldn't even get to lick the bottom of the bowl. In the end, it was power that counted. People like them didn't even have the right to interject. They could only endure. However, they were all surprised when Zaya Chen said, Well, I came to the Spirit Rune Pavilion only to learn. My goal has always been to follow my boss. Even if this grandfather and granddaughter duo didn't die today, I wouldn't be staying here. Also, when I said that there won't be a spirit rune pavilion after today, it isn't because of my enmity with the two of them. It is because the spirit rune pavilion's existence is a disgrace for the heavenly talisman Starfield Navalun. Come ah. Everyone looked at each other, not knowing what Zaya Chan was saying. Just how was the spirit rune pavilion a disgrace? When I opened the sacred lands gate, I saw a record left behind by a senior. That senior had sealed himself in the sacred land right before his death. His physical body remained, but he had no head. When I read what he left behind, I learned that he had no face to see future generations, so he intentionally destroyed his head. When Zaya Chen opened the gate to the sacred land, he saw a corpse and a sealed suicide note. The note recorded the origin of this sacred land. The truth was that in that ancient battle, every sect had participated. Back then, the Spirit Rune Pavilion was actually only a third-rate sect. If they only didn't join the others in that battle, that would be one thing. But they actually took advantage of the chaos to sneak into some other sects and steal their secrets. Those sects that they stole from were essentially all third-rate sects as well. They didn't dare to go to second-rate sects. The battle from back then was truly apocalyptic. Although the human race won in the end, it was a miserable victory. The supreme sects and experts fought to the death and were wiped out. Even amongst other sects, less than one percent of their inheritance remained. The line of talisman cultivators then received a heavy blow and never managed to recover from the loss. As for the Spirit Rune Pavilion, due to not participating in the battle and sneaking in some benefits, they managed to preserve quite a bit of their power. At that time, the pavilion master hid all the treasures that he had stolen. Those treasures could not see the light of day in that era. Otherwise, Others would all know what the Spirit Rune Pavilion had done. Thus, those secret treasures were passed down one era after another, and they still didn't dare to take them out. The secret of these treasures was passed down from Pavilion Master to Pavilion Master only. At the time of the seventh generation Pavilion Master, the seventh generation Pavilion Master made a heavy decision. He directly sealed himself and all the treasures inside placing a talisman on the gate that was almost impossible to decode. That was the origin of the sacred land. That seventh-generation pavilion master viewed the actions of his ancestors as a disgrace. Hence, he sealed himself inside in wait for a destined person to expose the truth. As the pavilion master, he didn't have the courage to reveal the truth himself but continuing to keep the secret was something that his conscience would not allow him to do. Ultimately, he made such a decision, leaving everything to future generations. When they heard this explanation, the Spirit Rune Pavilion's experts were dismayed. They couldn't believe that their ancestors would do such a horrible thing. 
it was everyone's first time hearing that the spirit room pavilion actually possessed such a dirty history so much time had passed so they didn't know how they should judge the spirit room pavilion's ancestors they were cowards who feared death but it was due to them that these ancient inheritances were preserved however to say that this was an accomplishment would only cause people to look at them with scorn for their methods these treasures are the collective wisdom of our ancestors so it should be shared amongst all talisman cultivators according to the seventh generation pavilion masters will when these ancient tomes see the light of day once more they should be shared with everyone to atone for the sins of the spirit rune pavilion hence i will act according to the seventh generation pavilion master's will this learning will be shared with everyone who wishes to learn perhaps that is the only way for the spirit rune pavilion to apologize for their crimes other than that the reason i said that the spirit rune pavilion is gone after today is because i don't want the disciples and elders to carry the sins of their ancestors thus the spirit rune pavilion is hereby disbanded everyone can find new homes after saying that countless people were delighted whether it was to zaya chen or the seventh generation pavilion master they were filled with gratitude such magnanimity was admirable let's go we'll take a look at the sacred land together zaya chen led everyone to a hidden location chapter three thousand six hundred fifty seven layers of suspicion upon arriving at the spirit rune pavilion's sacred land people saw endless ancient tomes and talismans they also saw a headless skeleton at this moment all of the heavenly talisman star fields experts walked over to the skeleton and kowtowed they felt great admiration for this senior as a pavilion master he crushed his own head to atone for his ancestors sins that wasn't even his own sin yet he was willing to give up his life to make up for the sins of his ancestors how many people were capable of assuming such a burden upon entering the sacred land zaya chen looked around nothing had changed he knew that while gongsun xuan and gongsun zi were busy hunting him down they weren't in the mood to investigate these things anyway they simply didn't have the power to study these things in front of everyone zaya chen made an inventory of ancient books talismans tomes inscriptions and other treasures starting today these things would be shared amongst all talisman cultivators they could flip through them copy them and do whatever they wanted with them but the treasures had to stay here this sacred land now belonged to everyone anyone was qualified to study these but they definitely could not allow anyone to bring them away or damage them this sacred land would be the sacred land of the entire heavenly talisman star field eighteen top sects would join forces to guard it and they couldn't let the slightest accident happen to this place the people to copy them had to be experts of the top eighteen sects they also had to monitor anyone coming and going if anyone even dared to form a wicked thought toward this place they would be the enemy of the entire heavenly talisman star field and summarily executed Zaya Chen spent ten days making a copy of all of these things. Many of these talismans were things that he had studied, but there were many that he had neglected due to not having any use for them at the time. He would have to study them in the future slowly. The Spirit Rune Pavilion's signboard was torn down during this time. As for the resources in the treasury, Zaya Chen ordered people to directly exchange them for money and distribute it amongst people a slightly bitter portion was given to those poorer sects while those powerful sects were given a bit less that was because those with power didn't need to worry about running out of money while the poorer ones had difficulty just surviving zaya chen hoped to lessen the pressure on them at least a bit as for zaya chen himself he didn't take any portion he even exchanged a few of his own valuable things for money to distribute to use his words he had come to the spirit rune pavilion with nothing now that he was leaving 
he didn't want to take anything other than knowledge. There was nothing he could do about the spirit rune pavilion being disbanded. At least, he could feel a bit more at peace if he did this. Countless people felt admiration for Xia Chen's actions. They also sighed over how blind Gongsun Zi was. Just how many women would dream of having such a good husband, but she actually wanted to kill him. In the end, she simply destroyed herself. Read this novel and other amazing translated novels from the original source at the Novelum. Come once the copies were done, Xia Chen accepted an invitation from the senior experts to expound on the Tao. Xia Chen then shared his own experiences and knowledge with everyone. This one Tao discussion lasted three days and nights. Countless experts came to listen. Seeing those experts' reverent and worshipful appearances, Guo Ran was jealous. Showing off silently really is the strongest. I thought that I already did very well, but this fellow immediately tossed me into the dust. Where is the justice? Long Chen and Guo Ran sat in a restaurant, staring at the sea of figures around Xia Chen. Long Chen smiled. Xia Chen is using his real ability, using runes to enter the Tao. Every single one of his words contains profundities and gives food for thought. As for you, me, what about me? Did you see that I used a single arm to beat up Bloodkill Hall's number one genius? Quibbled Guo ran stubbornly. Give it up. That Jai Wine was an idiot. I refuse to believe that he's the Bloodkill Hall's number one genius. Unless Imputa got crap in his head, he wouldn't raise such a pig. Let me put it to you this way. I mentioned my fight with the Nine Underworld Luacha. Even without a supreme bone, within the same realm, she could easily slay Jai Wine. Jai Wang wasn't able to unleash even a fraction of his supreme bone's power before fighting you in a direct clash like a dumb dog. Have you seen such a stupid assassin before? asked Long Chen. Well, that doesn't matter. He said that he's the Bloodkill Hall's number one expert, so he must be the Bloodkill Hall's number one expert. Although Guo Ran continued quibbling, his tone weakened a great deal. Through this reminder, it truly seemed that there were some problems with this fellow. Was an assassin who fought people directly really an assassin? I've seen the Nine Underworld Hall's palace master, Lyo Benke. I've also seen the Bloodkill Hall's palace master, in Puda. To tell the truth, both of them gave me a similar sense of pressure. It's simply that, in terms of intelligence, in Puda is far ahead of Lyo Benke. Perhaps I'd believe it if Jai Wine was from the Nine Underworld Hall, but if you were to say that he was from the Bloodkill Hall and someone that Imputa personally taught, I'd refuse to believe it even if you beat me to death. Long Chen shook his head. Boss, are you saying that he wasn't from the Bloodkill Hall? Was he a fake? Asked Guo Ran. No, his movement art is truly the Bloodkill Hall's technique. Furthermore, those people that I killed that day were also true assassins of the Bloodkill Hall, said Long Chen. Boss, you're confusing me. Is Jai Wang from the Bloodkill Hall or not? Asked Guo Ran. TCH, I'm confused, too. He's definitely from the Bloodkill Hall, but I have no idea what Imputer raised such an idiot for, said Long Chen, feeling vexed. Imputer was a crafty old fox. He definitely wouldn't raise such an idiot. But it was impossible for someone with a supreme bone to appear in the Bloodkill Hall and have Impuda not notice. So the question was, what was his goal? Even Long Chen couldn't see through Impuda. That damn fatty had a stomach full of sinister schemes. Long Chen had to be wary of him. Who cares? Impuda is just a world king. Do we need to fear him? Guo Ran shrugged the confusion off. However, Long Chen shook his head. Your ego is getting inflated. Let me tell you, your performance this time was only so perfect because Jai Wang was cooperating with you idiotically. It doesn't mean that you really have the power of a supreme expert. 
other than that you should not view imputa as inferior just because you've seen some half-step divine venerates you should understand that all those people are immortal cultivators while imputa is a god cultivator he has believers throughout the nine heavens and ten lands even though he is a world king his faith energy allows him to unleash the full power of a world domain divine item world's domain divine items are said to possess enough power to destroy an entire prefecture have you seen such power yet no not yet all the half-step divine venerates you've seen are immortal cultivators since you haven't seen a true god cultivator yet you can't imagine how terrifying they are as for an expert like imputa he can sweep through those half-step divine venerates don't get too confident or you'll suffer a miserable defeat warned long chen yuo ran truly was growing too confident with his new supreme bone long chen had to knock him down a bit or this fellow would really think that he was unrivaled three days later saya chen finished expounding the tao in front of countless reverent gazes the three of them left the heavenly talisman star field eh? in a dark and secluded palace and pewter was sitting in a swirl of white mist that white mist was made of faith energy master my supreme bone has finally awakened another figure silently appeared within the palace just like a spectre if long chen and the others were present they would definitely be shocked because this person was the person that guo ran had just slain jai wine chapter three thousand six hundred fifty eight twin brothers however this jai wine looked colder and more reserved than the other jai wine his eyes were like those of a devil within this dark palace they emitted a spectral light that would give others chills those eyes did not appear to be the eyes of a human they were like those of a wild beast filled with a thirst to kill as if he lived to kill and Puda smiled and nodded excellent your little brother's talent has finally been reclaimed by you you should thank long chen i will surely thank him i'll use my brother's hand to kill him and express how grateful i am that man also smiled these two were twin brothers they appeared almost identical however the one that yu ran had killed was called jai Wying, while this one was called jai wuming one the latter didn't have the slightest grief over his brother's death instead he was gratified let me see your hands said impudo jai wuming extended his hands both of his palms were covered in heavenly tao runes emitting boundless power most importantly there seemed to be some connection between his hands good very good your jai family's bloodline inheritance can only be perfectly displayed by your hands your supreme bone can control time but now your other hand can control space when you become an immortal king your supreme bones will undergo a heaven toppling transformation at that time you will no longer have any rivals within the same realm for you to be able to control space time i in Puda, have finally obtained a successor worthy of carrying on my legacy when i pass down my full faith energy to you as well i'll watch as you sweep through everyone in this era you will turn the bloodkill hall into a legend of the assassin world and Cuda laughed delightedly when he looked at jai wuming's hands it's all thanks to master that i could reach this point jai wuming knelt reverently there's no need for courteous words between master and disciple i and puda have no child or heir you are my only disciple you are like my son so what is mine is yours however even if you can control both supreme bones don't get too careless you need to keep working hard once you reach master's realm you can assist the divine venerate in his important affairs said imputa feeling gratified master your disciple will become a world king soon and then a divine venerate why must you serve others wouldn't it be better to be king when the time comes silence imputa's joyful expression instantly changed 
he roared so loudly that the palace quivered as a result divine might raged and faith energy gushed out angrily jai wooming was forced to kneel by a terrifying pressure he couldn't move and was horrified you cannot be disrespectful to divine venerate brahma at any time otherwise even if you are my most beloved disciple i will kill you shouted in puta yes yes disciple understands his mistake jai wooming began to sweat he kowtowed piously only then did in puta retract his aura jai wooming was terrified inside at that moment he finally experienced just how terrifying of an existence his master was in front of impuda he was like an ant he had previously managed to kill a half-step divine venerate and now he had even obtained jai wying supreme bone with both supreme bones awakening his confidence instantly soared he had even felt that his current power might not be inferior to his master's however his newfound confidence was instantly shattered impuda hadn't even attacked but just his aura already made him unable to move killing him required nothing more than a thought for impuda read this novel and other amazing translated novels from the original source at the novelum come seeing jai wooming quivering and kneeling in Pude's expression softened. He then patted Jai Wooming's shoulder. Child, remember, you should never form the thought of betraying divine venerate Brahma. He is a mighty and great person who cannot be blasphemed. The reason you could even think of such a thing is because your ego has inflated too much. But a frog in a well cannot speak of the ocean. I will put it frankly to you. The current hue is just like a frog at the bottom of a well. Let us not talk of divine venerate Brahma, even in the same realm. There are many people that you cannot fight right now. You need more tempering. Your arrogance shows that you are still young. However, many people will only ever be young in their lifetime due to that arrogance. They won't get a chance to grow up. Disciple will remember Master's teachings, promised Jai Wooming, his head lowered. Impuda looked at him. Why are you hesitating? Say what you want to say. As long as it doesn't offend Lord Brahma, it's fine. Jai Wooming raised his head and nervously said, Compared to divine venerate Brahma and master, disciple is naturally a frog at the bottom of a well. The light of a firefly doesn't dare to compete with the moonlight but you say that there are many people that I cannot match in the same realm. Disciple. Disciple doesn't quite believe it. Are you saying that I am still not a match for Long Chen? Impudo was silent for a moment. Long Chen didn't fight in the heavenly talisman star field, but his art is heavier than before. It was only through an ordinary photographic jade, so it's difficult for me to judge his current strength. You have a pair of supreme bones now. Although you can only control a trace of their space and time, energy, you have mastered 70% of my assassination, arts. I feel like if you were to fight, you would be relatively even. Victory or defeat would likely depend on luck. How can that be? Is Long Chen really so powerful? He's nothing more than an ascender from the lower plane. He has no foundation, and has to fight for every bit that he obtains. As for myself, my Jai family is one of the immemorial divine families. I am also the disciple with the purest bloodline. With my family's foundation and your teachings, I've worked day and night at my cultivation. I've never slacked off, and even then I can only barely match him. Asked Jai Wooming, unable to accept this. It had to be known that Long Chen came from the lower plane. The lower plane's spiritual Kai, resources, inheritances, and other conditions were all inferior to the immortal worlds. To say that Jai Wooming was only a match for Long Chen wasn't that calling him trash. Long Chen is a variant. Let alone you, even I cannot see through him. But when I said, that there were others in the same realm who could beat you, I wasn't talking about Long Chen. 
I was talking about Dong Minjiu. Suddenly, Inputa pulled off the clothing on his chest, revealing a terrible wound. Jai Wumi cried out in shock. Master Yu. One Wying equals no trace, no shadow. Wuming equals no life. Chapter 3659 Silence of the Night. Yi Washing, there was a thumb sized hole in Inputa's chest, and scars stretched out of it like a spider web. It looked to be an old injury. This wound pierced all the way through Inputa's body. Even though the outer area had healed, the core still had blood seeping out of it. Master, how were you injured? Who did it? Jai Wuming was shocked. This happened forty seven thousand years ago. I was stabbed by someone, said Inputa. Forty seven thousand years ago? That Jai Wuming looked at the wound speechlessly. Just who was capable of injuring an expert, like Inputa? And even if they could wound him, how were they capable of inflicting a wound that wouldn't heal even after so long? A quick look at Navaloon Kam will leave you more fulfilled. Master, are you using this wound to warn me not to be arrogant? You want me to reserve myself. Disciple knows his mistake. Jai Wuming once more apologized. Inputa shook his head. No, this wound it isn't something that I kept intentionally. It is a wound that I am unable to heal. The energy of night dark resides within it, and it is a kind of powerful curse. It won't affect me during the day, but every time the dark night descends, the wound splits open. It has been affecting me for forty-seven thousand years. Otherwise, I would have long since advanced and killed that idiot Lyo Benken. Jai Wuming was completely shocked. What kind of power could resist even his master's faith energy? Master who did it? He was Shen, a name that shakes the heart of countless people in the nine heavens and ten lands, the assassin of the night. She has a nickname, Silence of the Nightum. As soon as you mention the Silence of the Night, everyone from the senior generation quivers. Furthermore, Silence of the Night is an ancient, desolate manifestation. Her night dark energy is one of the most terrifying laws, and this wound she inflicted on me is something that even divine venerate Brahma is unable to heal. As long as Yiwa Sheng doesn't die, her curse will follow me forever. This is why I have only mobilized my avatars for so many years. My true body must remain here. I have been accumulating faith energy all these years in preparation of removing her curse. Other than killing her, this is the only way to break this curse, said Imputa. Jai Wuming's heart pounded wildly. He had not expected there to be someone so terrifying in this world. He finally understood what it meant for there always to be heavens beyond the heavens. Imputa straightened his clothes once more. He lightly said, in that battle forty-seven thousand years ago, I almost fell to Yiwa Sheng's hands. If divine venerate Brahma didn't come in time, there would no longer be an Imputa in this world. Since I haven't seen her in so many years, Yiwa Sheng has probably advanced to the divine venerate realm. However, I have also profited from this injury. I had more time to focus on spreading my believers and gathering faith energy. While my realm stayed stuck at the peak of the world king realm, it caused my foundation to grow even steadier. By guarding against pride and impatience, my mental realm has also grown stronger. I have comprehended many of the principles that Divine Venerate Brahma expounded. Even though I am only a world king, an ordinary Divine Venerate will simply be slaughtered in front of me. Once I become a Divine Venerate, I will once more challenge Yi Sheng. I will repay the humiliation that she gave me a hundredfold. A sinister smile appeared on Imputa's face. His hatred for Yi Sheng had already sunk into his bones. Imputa continued, I showed you this wound to tell you to put away your arrogance and inflated heart. As an assassin, those two things are the greatest taboos. They can take your life at any time. When I said that there were many people in the same realm that could fight you, I simply wanted you to know that you aren't unrivaled. 
One of those rivals is Dong Minjiu, Yi Washeng's disciple. According to my current information, Dong Minjiu has awakened the Nidurk manifestation, meaning that she is exceptionally talented, to the point that she is receiving Yi Washeng's true inheritance. Yi Washeng is extremely prideful. Although she has accepted a few ordinary disciples, no one has ever been looked upon so favorably. But Dong Minju has been following Yi Washeng all this time and has passed through countless trials. She also assassinated a half step divine venerate a full month earlier than you. What? The? Jai Wuming was shocked. It had to be known that to assassinate that half step divine venerate, he had pushed himself to his limit, and he still almost failed to kill his target. But then, Dong Mengju had assassinated a half step divine venerate a month earlier than him. He knew that Dong Mengju was even younger than him. Regretfully, even Imputa could not obtain the full information on Dong Mingyu. If he were to learn that Dong Mingyu was also an ascender from the lower plane, he would be even more shocked. Wu Ming, remember, an assassin can never be arrogant. Otherwise, they will not be far from death. An assassin is a viper hiding in the dark. Who cares how powerful the target is? The only question is whether or not you can bite their vitals in one blow. If you can, then all their power is meaningless. They are ultimately only prey that falls to your hands. A calm heart, speedy reactions, accurate calculations, and a cool head, these are the most important things to an assassin. They might even be more important than your assassination arts, said in Puda. Disciple understands. Master, don't worry, disciple won't let you down. Jai Wuming bowed. The current him had once more returned to his calm and reserved self. Seeing him lacking the slightest impatience or arrogance, Imputa smiled and nodded. He was very satisfied with this disciple of his. Has your little brother's death caused any reaction from your family? asked Imputa. Master is wise. You had me let him think that he was unrivaled. Even when he strutted around me, I didn't let him affect me, making him look down on me. After learning a few superficial techniques, he called himself the Blood Kill Hole's number one expert. Also, after buying a few disciples and having them support him, he swaggered around the world. I even mentioned it to my father several times, but they ignored my warnings. Now that he's dead, they can't blame me. I can simply say that Jai Wang sent me the seed of his supreme bone before his death to avenge him. As for Master's actions, they are untraceable. Furthermore, even if they suspect anything, it's meaningless. I now have two supreme bones, so who can do anything to me? With your support, none of them dare to do anything to me. Based on the information my trusted aide in the family transmitted to me, the Jai family is currently sending experts to the heavenly talisman Starfield to chase after Long Chen's group, said Jai Wuing with a smile. Navaloon Kam and Puda nodded. Everything is going as predicted. After your brother's death, your father will definitely be suspicious, but he can't do anything. The Jai family will be yours, and my blood kill hall will also be yours. As long as he isn't a fool, he can only accept it. As for revenge, don't force it. Just put on an act. Long Chen has a close relationship with the Wine God Palace, and they are not a good existence to provoke. Rather than alerting him of your existence, it would be better to patiently wait for your chance. All right. Then I'm going to talk to my father, said Jai Wuming. Seeing that Imputa had no further instructions, he bowed to him, and his figure slowly faded away. Once Jai Wuming left, Imputa touched the wound on his chest. An expression of rancor then appeared on his face. Yi Washeng, just wait. Once my disciple kills your disciple, I will personally cut off your head. One Yi Wusheng equals night no sound. Chapter 3660 Condensing the Violet Tower Star I swept through the four seas, and crossed a thousand mountains, causing huge billows in heaven and earth. 
who can resist my supreme divine might if you need a peerless hero you can find kyo ran Xia chan how does that sound does it match my current status and style a flying boat calmly flew through the air on it kyo ran proudly chanted his new composition you should give up this chant of yours the beginning still hasn't changed since the martial heaven continent era you know that there's no such thing as the four seas and thousand mountains in the immortal world right if you don't have the talent don't pretend like you do why are you always trying to learn from that fellow mo nyan Xia chen was a bit speechless this composition of guo ren's was made with his utmost effort after so many years the last half had gone through countless changes making it seem like he was some poet but it only embarrassed long chen and the others to hear it over and over again no without enough power there won't be a good showing off thus without the opening line it would feel like i didn't exist by boss's side i can't accept people only remembering boss's name and not even knowing who i am that would be far too hurtful if the verse is trash it doesn't matter he he it's fine as long as it draws attention said you ran without minding it if you only want to find a sense of existence then this verse is fine after all you might be the only one of the few people in the world capable of making up such a bad verse most importantly when it comes to someone who dares to so shamelessly shout it you are probably all alone in this regard i believe you will get many people to remember you after all only an extraordinary person can reach such a realm of shamelessness said Xia chen he he when it comes to shamelessness i still admire mo nyan he's truly shameless i have to learn more from him in this regard said guo ran with a shameless laugh Xia chen was truly speechless now no wonder this fellow was so shameless he was competing with Mo Nyan. No one else could compare to the two of them. Slow down a bit. We have to turn a bit up ahead to get rent from this city, said Guo Ran. Oh, the flying boat stopped in the air, and Xia Chen and Guo Ran flew into the city. After that, Xia Chen threw out a talisman that instantly pierced the Soaring Dragon Company's grand formation. Guo Ran destroyed the Soaring Dragon Company's building with a single punch and directly plundered the treasury. They then turned and left. Everything occurred in just a few blinks of an eye. Nice job. Guo Ran immediately flew back to the flying boat with Xia Chen. After that, the flying boat made an arrogant arc in the sky before leaving under a torrent of curses from the Soaring Dragon Company's experts. Their movements were so proficient to the point of making people speechless. Most experts in the city didn't even know what was happening even after the flying boat left. At this moment, the flustered and exasperated Soaring Dragon Company's experts and a group of people were staring at them blankly. As usual, we'll take what we each need and leave the useless stuff to boss. Xia Chen and Guo Ran got to work in the flying boat. They had plundered over seventy of the Soaring Dragon Company's treasuries. Since Xia Chen hadn't brought anything from the Spirit Room Pavilion, he needed to start over. Hence, the Soaring Dragon Company became his main sponsor. Both of their pockets were already overflowing after plundering seventy of their treasuries. Despite that, Xia Chen was still missing quite a few precious materials. Anyway, Long Chen had said to plunder the Soaring Dragon Company as much as they wanted, and the missing materials would be made up for by the Huayan Trading Company. Xia Chen and Yua Ran were super efficient. Those grand formations of the Soaring Dragon Company might as well not be there in front of Xia Chen. He broke them effortlessly. Furthermore, with his formation disks, Xia Chen could accurately find the locations of their treasuries. Then Guo Ran would use his supreme bone to break all other obstacles in their way and snatch it. After that, the two would immediately leave. 
their cooperation was flawless. On their best day, they managed to plunder twenty of their treasuries. Because of this activity, Zaya Chen walked out of Gong Sun Zi's shadow quickly. Together with Guo Ran, they were like money grubbers, busying themselves with plundering and splitting their ill-gotten loot all day. There was so much loot to go through that they were too busy for anything else. As for Long Chen, he spent all day refining and consuming pills. He could already feel that the Nethergate star was on the verge of turning violet. Once it did, it would be time to condense the seventh star, the Violet Tower star. Half a month later, the flying boat stopped in a deep mountain range, and Long Chen suddenly let out a howl. As Violet Kai burst out of his entire body, the wild power blasted apart the surrounding mountains. Kai Wade scoured the land. A quick look at Navaloon come will leave you more fulfilled. Long Chen's sixth star finally turned fully violet. After that, a violet whirlpool appeared beneath Long Chen's danshan. When it manifested, violet kai from all six stars surged toward the current in a never-ending cycle. That whirlpool looked like a gaping maw that would never be satisfied. It devoured the violet kai from all six stars. Not only that, but the violet clouds surrounding the 108,000 stars were also devoured. Long Chen jumped in shock. He had not expected the formation of the seventh star to require such a huge amount of energy. The violet kai of the six stars and the violet clouds of the 108,000 stars were all absorbed, and it still wasn't done. There were signs of the Feng Fu, Alieth, Life Fate, Enlightenment Palace, Divine Gate, and Nethergate stars contracting, almost withering. The 108,000 stars also started showing signs of growing listless. Long Chen was horrified by that. How could the seventh star be so greedy that it was trying to devour the energy of all the stars? Just as Long Chen was worried that the seventh star would destroy all of his stars, it finally stopped devouring their energy. After that, the violet whirlpool actually began to spin in the opposite direction. The Feng Fu, Alieth, Life Fate, Enlightenment Palace, Divine Gate, and Nethergate stars received their energy back from the whirlpool. At the same time, the 108,000 stars thrummed with life once more, and the violet clouds appeared above them. Everything returned to normal. However, the starry sea seemed to have come alive now, and was moving according to a certain rhythm. As for the whirlpool beneath Long Chen's danshan, it slowly dissipated. Now, there was a violet gas cloud the size of a grain of rice at its core. Despite being small, it seemed to contain immense power. This small gas cloud contained a huge amount of violet kai, and Long Chen felt it thrumming through his body as well. Even without him intentionally circulating it, the violet kai filled his body, flowing through every vein and nourishing every inch of his body. Previously, if he wanted to use his violet kai, he had to use his starry sea. But now, wherever he willed it, the violet kai would appear. The amount of violet kai in his body had shrunk, but there was a huge difference in quality. If his previous violet kai was like a thick strand of hemp that could carry a thousand tons, then his current violet kai was like a strand of silk that could carry tens of thousands of tons. Violet Tower Star, you finally appeared. Hee hee, now I have confidence in going to the Nine Underworld Island. Long Chen clenched his fist. Sensing the powerful violet kai in his body, he smiled. Move out. Target, Nine Underworld Island.